problem. U.S. officials, even if they are slightly more willing to go against Israel's wishes, but still feels the need to give lip service to Israel's will and thus issued a statement condemning Russia, saying it was unhelpful to allow such sales. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports telephone service provider Sprint has agreed to pay $15.5 million in a settlement to the federal government for allegedly overcharging for wiretap services. Sprint was accused of overcharging the government by about 58% and earning $21 million in additional profits between 2007 and 2010 for conducting wiretaps. The government reimburses telecommunication companies like Sprint or AT&T for reasonable expenses whenever the government orders wiretaps. The government claimed Sprint violated Federal Communications Commission guidelines set up in 2006 by adding costs not covered under federal law, including the cost of financing modifications to equipment facilities and services installed to comply with the Communications Assistance for the Law Enforcement Act wiretapping law established in 1994. Sprint tapped phones for the FBI, the DEA, and other agencies. The company denied wrongdoing after the settlement was announced. The federal government reported 3,576 wiretaps were conducted in 2013, a 5% increase from the previous year. About 88% of those wiretaps in 2013 were related to narcotics. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a former Blackwater security guard was sentenced to life in prison and three others got 30-year terms on Monday in the massacre of 14 unarmed Iraqi civilians at a Baghdad traffic circle in 2007, closing a case that had outraged Iraqis and inflamed anti-U.S. sentiment around the world. The incident from September 2007 stood out for its brazenness and formed a tense backdrop to talks between the United States and Iraq over the continued presence of U.S. forces in Iraq. It also sparked debate over private security contractors working for the U.S. government in war zones. The four guards opened fire with machine guns and grenade launchers on the Iraqis, including women and children, at Nicer Square. A heavily armed four-truck Blackwater Worldwide convoy the men were in had been trying to clear a path for U.S. diplomats. Nicholas Slatton of Tennessee was convicted in October of killing the driver of a car the defendants had argued at trial they believed contained a bomb. Paul Slough of Texas, Evan Liberty of New Hampshire, and Dustin Hurd of Tennessee, who were convicted of manslaughter, were each sentenced to 30 years in prison, the mandatory minimum they could face. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Gourmet chef Ted Allen is here. He's the author of the new cookbook, Pretentious Foodie Bullshit, and he's going to show us how to cook some fussy little foodie dishes for you and all your asshole friends. Aww. Welcome back to the show, Ted. What sort of stupid, over-elaborate, fancy ass meal are you going to make for us today? We're going to cook one of the very most pretentious dishes in my cookbook. Oh. It's a stupid trendy piece of fish coated in some kind of nut you've never heard of, served alongside a puree of baby something or other. Oh, great! That's annoying! <laughs> Let's yeah. get started. Okay, have at it. First, it's very important to choose the most expensive type of fish you can find for some vague environmental reason that you can then pair it back to your faux intellectual gay wad oh. dinner party guests. Oh. Okay. And now I assume all these other ingredients are organic and locally sourced and all that bullshit. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yes. Now, uh, what about the uh, pureed baby turnips, Ted? Ah, you must blanch them for 30 seconds, then you shock them in an ice bath. Peel them, then boil them again with a little sugar, thyme, and a pinch of salt. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online, of course, over at freetalklive.com. We also have Skype if you would like to Skype into the show tonight. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to send a contact request on over to us on Skype. We'll approve it as soon as we notice it come through. Uh, once again, that's username lrn.fm. And joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And uh, again, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. I teased this one last night. I didn't get a chance to get to the story. Found it originally over at copblock.org, and it was, uh, I guess, posted, um, the original article was posted at truthvoice.com by friend of the show Virgil Vaduva. Uh, now, he did not witness this happen, but... He has the he's written about it because we've actually had Virgil on the show. He's a independent photojournalist who's been arrested a couple of times, uh, once for civil disobedience and once for basically just doing his job uh, as a photojournalist. So he's reporting for TruthVoice.com here uh, out of Gainesville, Florida, where it's not hard to imagine that this surreal story does not originate in a nation run by a violent warlord. Or maybe it does. But it actually comes from Florida, where Lucas Jewell, a resident of Gainesville, noticed local members of the Alachua County Sheriff's Department. Uh, this is the same town, by the way, where, you know, the big college is, uh, University of Florida. Yes. Uh, Gainesville, Florida. They were riding through town in a tank-like armored vehicle that appeared to be a Lenko Bearcat. Mm. Now, uh, those of us on the show here are intimately familiar with the Lenko Bearcat, given that the Keene Police Department, we're here in Keene, New Hampshire, uh, had acquired one back in 2012, and there was uh, quite a bit of pushback here in Keene. In fact, the, the very first time the company had ever had any kind of a, a pushback against its efforts to uh, bring these Bearcat devices, which cost around $300,000, uh, to various different towns around the country, big cities, even small towns like you know Keene, New Hampshire, with a population of 25,000, their police departments have been given grants from the federal government to get these bearcats, hmm. and they are very scary devices. They are generally you know painted in a militaristic either black or olive well, green style. Yeah, they're an armored truck with a turret usually, and gun ports and gun as ports. well. But armored uh, trucks have gun ports. They can even uh, arm this truck up with a special gas injection unit where they can pierce the a door of a home or, or a wall or something like that and uh, inject uh, poisonous gas or whatever knockout gas they would use to uh, really disorient the people who are inside. Yeah, so I think that worked this, out great with the Branch Davidians. Yeah, it sure did, didn't it? The, uh, the suspension's a little different, so they're set up higher than, a, than an armored truck usually. Because the question you really have to ask yourself is, who the hell's buying these things, and why are they buying them if you can just get a used armored truck to do the same job? Well, the only person buying them, uh, or the only people buying them, are police departments. So the, Lenko the, will the not sell one to you. The police departments aren't buying them. The federal government is buying them and giving them to police departments. True. That's true. I think they actually, uh, you know, this I'm not sure. This is just another welfare program. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure who cuts the check ultimately. I don't know if the feds cut a check to the city and then the city makes the purchase or if the feds just cut the check directly, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. Anyway, they're dri they're driving through the streets in the Bearcat and ultimately they pull this guy over with the Bearcat. Jewel believes crazy. this is a gross abuse of taxpayers' dollars, just the idea that they're riding around in this thing uh, and as opposed to the militarization of police – he found this display of military hardware on public roads offensive and showed the individuals uh, riding, the riding in the tank his middle finger and proceeded to continue on his journey. Now, this is protected speech. Yep, there's to, a lot of evidence for to that. Be able to, flip, rude. <laughs> to, to be able to flip a cop a bird or to tell a cop F you hmm. is classic protected speech. And there have been hmm. instances of the police harassing people for doing those things, and ultimately the police losing subsequently up to, the, I believe, the Supreme Court level. Yeah, it doesn't matter to these police yeah. officers. They're not going to face any fines for it. Yeah, I actually flipped off the Keenan uh, Bearcat this morning. Is that morning. right? Yeah. This morning? Uh, well, this after 
this morning or this afternoon, I was riding around with James, and we happened to see it turning on to Marlboro, and I oh, wow. flipped it a nice, healthy bird. Wow, it's out there uh, <laughs> It's out there more often than uh, than I guess I expected. I, you know, they've been kind of cautious to not use it so much around here because there are a lot of people who are paying attention to the use of the bear cat here. So every six months, mm-hmm. the Keene police have to give a report to the city council as to what were the uses of the bear cat in that six-month period. So at least up here, even though we have this monstrosity, at the very least there are interested parties who are keeping an eye on this thing. How many gallons per mile does it take it to power be, that thing? Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be uh, very poor on its gas mileage. I mean, it's already I think like a Ford 350 or an F350 sort of underneath that they put a new shell on, if you will. And I imagine that uh, all that armor doesn't help it with its its gas mileage. Mm-mm. So no, uh, I imagine this gas mileage is well sub 10 miles to the yeah, gallon. I suspect you're right about that. The deputies from the sheriff's department, however, had other plans for Mr. J- Mr. Jewel after he flipped them the bird. They followed him closely for several blocks and then decided to pull him over in an attempt to punish and intimidate him. What appears to be a paramilitary group of individuals exits the armored vehicle and immediately proceeds to assault Mr. Jewel, accuse him, uh, accusing him that he was receiving oral sex from his girlfriend and that his middle finger gesture constituted what they called an improper hand signal in violation of Florida traffic law. The suggestion that a middle finger raised in the air was intended to be a traffic hand gesture is ludicrous, but it didn't stop these cops from attempting to bully Jewel into submission. Hmm. And these cops are in full camo gear, by the way. Uh, there's screen caps on the page over at Truth Voice of these guys. They've got sheriff you emblazoned all, across them. You think them. they're all jacked they up? the rifles out? <laughs> I, I doubt it. You, th- you think they're all jacked up on the, huh, we got the bear cat out and we got the camo out and you, you flip not? us a bird? Yeah, why wouldn't they be Who the heck up? do you think you are? Well, didn't we just talk about the police uh, being adrenaline junkies, some of them, last night? Yeah, so why yeah. wouldn't they be jacked up about that? Well, not to mention there's a lot of steroid abuse amongst uh, police, and it's that true. makes you crazier. So the suggestion here, uh, the, the video was provided to Truth Voice by Lucas Jewell, and it illustrates the level of militarization that local police forces are reaching, including patrolling U.S. streets and using military vehicles to enforce minor traffic violations or punish peaceful citizens for protected speech. Now, the video itself is about 14 minutes long, so we're not going to uh, to play it on the air. But it, at one point, Lucas actually informs the officer of, you know, hey, look, man, there are court uh, decisions here that have determined this is clearly protected speech. And the cop makes some comment like, look, I don't know about any court decisions, but that was an improper hand signal and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So As though he's making a left turn or signaling that he was going to take his car upward. As these police officers were properly informed, uh, it was considered protected speech, and that's been cemented by a number of federal court cases. That did not deter the cops from pursuing various accusations against Jewel, none of which were sound or reasonable. Fortunately, a crowd started to gather and take pictures, which prompted Mr. Jewel to start chanting, Tell me what a police state looks like! This is what a police state looks like! (laughs) After this, the cops gave him a warning for the improper hand signal and let him go. Regardless how one feels about making an obscene gesture towards the police... I think it's highly unwise. The bottom line is such a gesture is protected constitutionally, and nobody should be harassed for it, especially by heavily armed, thuggish individuals riding around in what appears to be a tank through downtown Gainesville, Florida. Well, Mark, I understand you're saying that it's unwise, but, I mean, are you saying that people should shut up, they should clam up, they shouldn't express themselves for fear of what these guys might do? I don't think that it... uh I, I don't think that it's a good way to get across your opinion. There's far better ways where you can explain yourself far better. You know, just a flipping of the bird doesn't really— Yeah, I mean, but it might feel good. Yeah, I, I find it cathartic. Yeah. Yeah. I, Look, I get there's it. risks involved. I mean, do you think the people who flip the cops off don't realize they might be taking a risk mm-hmm. by doing that? I mean, if you don't think so, then... Uh, I think that after the court case uh, that came out that said that you were allowed to flip uh, cops uh, the bird, that probably more people are like, huh, I guess I'll get away with it. But what they don't realize is there's a lot of pain in the butt between the flip and the court decision where you no uh, doubt. get away with it. No doubt. But the, uh, it hasn't been just getting away with it. People have been winning civil judgments against Exactly. So it could actually make you some money. More coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. 
Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on our site. Again, that is freetalklive.com. We're talking about the Bearcat, this armored tank, armored personnel carrier that uh, can have a 50 cal mounted to the top. It's got gun ports, can have a... Uh, gas, like a poisonous mustard gas kind of injection system or whatever kind of gas, I guess they use, tear gas, etc. 
Uh, it's a pretty dangerous vehicle, and it definitely makes the police look scarier than they've ever looked. And now on the streets of Gainesville, the cops are suited up in camouflage, and they're riding around in this thing and pulling people over, apparently. The, uh, we'll continue the story here in moments. We recently tried. As a matter of fact, uh, Rich is trying as you know, just about as we speak here. You just uh, should don't I try you... it again. <laughs> during I can do the, that during the break. <laughs> tried this uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Lot 439 from Cameron Hughes Wines. So you go to chwine.com and <laughs> taste this really great cab it is from a famous napa valley vineyard and it sells um for you know super high-end premium wine prices but you can get it now uh, because it's sold out every place else this is the only place you can get this is a radio exclusive offer um this week only get this amazing cab for 20 percent off of the the regular price that they were selling it at a cameron hughes and what cameron hughes does is takes high-end wines and then discounts them like 70 or 80 percent and then sells them to you. This is 20% off that additionally. So use go to chwine.com, use our, our code FTL by clicking on the microphone in the upper left, you enter the code, you'll save 20% off of this, I believe some other select wines. Um, this one is only this week, and it should be re- eaten with uh, red meat. It's a very full-bodied cab. It's an excellent wine. And uh, use coupon code FTL, and you'll save also on the shipping. So you get free shipping on all the wines at chwine.com, and you'll save 20% on this bottle and other select wines, chwine.com. Click on the microphone in the upper left. Use coupon code FTL. Yeah, it's excellent. I'm looking forward to trying it again. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'm wondering if you... uh, Like, how it goes with wine is... uh, You know, we tasted it last night when we opened it, but does it continue... We opened it Sunday night. Sunday night? Yeah. Maybe it was the night before last night. Okay, so um, the... Does the taste change over time? I don't know. I mean, I suspect a wine expert would probably say yes, but uh, I'm not a wine expert, so I <laughs> doubt I'll be able to tell you uh, whether that's the case. Rich? Well, I'm not a wine expert either, but it's good. If you leave wine uncorked, there's a uh, virus, I believe, that will move into it and turn it into uh, vinegar. Okay, but the virus won't like infect you. It'll just no, no, you won't get sick okay. from it. But it <laughs> may be it may be a bacterium. I so, can't remember. So what. you'll know it when you taste it. I imagine it'll last for several days though, prior to something like that happening. I guess uh, someone who can uh, look up on the internet could probably figure that question out or uh, figure the answer out to that. Let's go to your phone calls, and then we'll talk more about the bear cat rolling through the streets of Gainesville, Florida, pulling people over. Uh, Because, you know, militarization of the police, it's a real thing. Uh, Let's go first, though, to Derek, listening in Mississippi. Derek, you're on Free Talk Live at the Inn, Rich, Paul, and Mark. Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I just, I mean, my personal comment, you know, with uh, having to deal with the law before, you know, the law, you know, they can be, very outspoken and you know they kind of harass people but you know a lot of people you know get scared of the law because the law intimidates them well yeah i mean the the police are uh you know they're trained to be intimidating and that's, uh, you know, that's what they do. They want to intimidate their victims. So the victims are, you know, rolling over and easily bending over for the police, re- grabbing their cash, handing it to the cops, uh, well, you know, through the court system, of course. They wouldn't uh, take bribes or anything like I that. I think police are trained to control crowds and control individuals uh, through the force of their personality. It's certainly preferable to getting shot. I thought they were trained to yeah. do it through force of arms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Derek, anything else you want to share tonight? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would just say, I mean, my personal, my personal, personal opinion on that, you know, they use, they use their, their authority and their privileges, you know, to get information whenever they want something, you know, I don't, I don't think that's right, but, you know, 
They do, they do what they got to do. Well, they do uh, what they can get away with, which is almost anything. Thank you, Derek, for your call tonight. Uh, they, you know, they train these cops to be intimidating, and any cop will uh, who's honest will certainly tell you that. Not only are they trained to be intimidating, but they're trained to tell lies as well. If they can get you to admit to committing some sort of non-crime by lying to you about what your buddy just said to them, which you know maybe completely fabricated. Like if Rich, you and I were pulled over, and uh, the cops separated us, one of the cops might come up and say, "Hey, uh, look, Ian, uh, your buddy Rich over there just gave you up. He said you're the one who had that uh, bag of marijuana or whatever." You know, mm-hmm. they completely lie, even though you never said that to the cop. They could say that to try to make me think that that actually happened, and then they use that technique to turn people against one another and you know get them to snitch on each other. Mm. And then you're like, yeah, I had a bag of marijuana, but so did he. Mm, And then you're under arrest. (laughs) Uh, So, you know, this is not good. This is not the kind of police that I want. I want, you know, cops. If we're going to have cops, I want the ones that are oriented towards peace. I want the ones who, you know, they're going to break up a fight rather and send the guys home Mm. rather than arresting both of them, uh, if if possible. Dueling uh, is a essentially a victimless crime. It might be really bad form it might be a poor well, choice not every fight's a duel but yes yeah sure well mm-hmm. if it's not then it's an assault and somebody yeah. really does need uh, some you know, needs a little justice at that point in my opinion yeah uh yeah. send the drunk guy home take him home rather than you know taking him to jail uh that's the kind of i'd like to see policing with more compassion like that personally but mm. when you've got these militarized cops with their battle gear on, I mean, that's what these guys look like in this video. I'll, I'll post it over on our Facebook and Twitter. The guys rolling out of this Bearcat in Gainesville look like they are, you know, they're a military squad. I mean, that's the way they're dressed. That's what they're wearing. And the dudes even have, like, military-looking tattoos on and everything. They literally look like they stepped out of Fallujah. So we can continue here. Mike's in Oregon. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. Hey guys, hey. Um, to answer your question, and you were wondering about the the wine, uh, <clears throat> particularly red wine, uh, how long it will last. Um, my buddy Craig, who um, I used to work with at the liquor store in New Hampshire, uh, he said when it comes to red wine, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a cold. Um, it usually you want to kind of drink it one bottle within probably within the day, just because it might keep, but it's not going to taste. Same, it will eventually um, start to turn to vinegar. That usually huh. will take a lot longer than a day or so. Good news, but Rich. Wanted... <laughs> There's a <laughs> bottle of wine to drink. Yeah, <laughs> Ruby. We can handle that. I can help you with that. Uh, hey, Mike, I know you were calling about a different reason. Stand by. We'll bring you back here for that in a moment. And more about the Bearcat pulling a man over for flipping the bird. Toward the police, 855 450 freeze the toll free number. Plus, Liberty Maniacs t shirts are under attack again, legally, this time from the Hillary Clinton campaign. If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. World fast for peace. I don't understand what I don't understand what you said. If the whole world fasted by Gandhi, we would see great results for this 
struggle to survive a world order. There's never going to be any peace. You sound like you're on drugs, dear. <laughs> sounds like, it sounds like you're, you're, you're a, a flower anyone, child. You're pumped up on drugs. Any woman who doesn't agree with you is on drugs or something. I may be a racist and anti-Semite, but I have all my faculties. Well, racism and sexism are one. You're one of those love mankind, love thy neighbor. And uh, I am too. And thank you both for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. That is the one thing I can certainly agree with uh, the lady on. Normally, I can't understand a word that she says, but I think <laughs> I think Scott, the uh, the bigot, did interpret her correctly, and that she is interested in peace, and I like that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The Bearcat is rolling through the streets of Gainesville, Florida, and pulling people over. At least one guy. He got it on video. And this was after he flipped the bird to the police. They uh, were rolling, you know, driving around in their Bearcat like a bunch of, uh, you know, boys with their toy. And he gave them the bird. They pulled him over for supposed... Uh, improper hand signal and allegedly receiving a BJ from his girlfriend. I'm not sure you can. Th- that's an offensive thing to say. I'm not sure you can talk about who's being. That's what the cops say. say I know it's guy. offensive. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure you can, who you can talk about being more immature in this circumstance, right? Like these guys are out like they're playing with their big giant Tonka truck. There's no doubt about it. But yep. this dude flips off somebody uh, riding down the road for not particularly any good reason. Uh, yeah, there's a good reason. These guys are an occupying military force, and he's upset about. It. I you think, think that's that that bird flipping reason. did anything about it? Anything about Made that? Made him feel better. It let him know he was uncomfortable with yeah, it. Yeah, that's if right. Nothing else. I mean, they think we love them. They really yep. do. They no, are they so don't. full of themselves. No, they don't. Oh, they, they, they think a lot of people love persecuted. them. Persecuted. This is the, they believe themselves to be a persecuted class. That's why they bunch up and they have the thin blue line because the rest of the world, the civilians, don't know what our life is There's like. There's cops getting compliments from people all the time. I've seen it happen. There sure. was a guy who put up a sign down the street here from the LRN studios after the police were hurting people down at the uh, the riots, the Pumpkin Fest riots that happened here in October. One of the cop suckers in the neighborhood actually took the time to make a custom clapboard sign and put it up in front of his house just to thank KPD for the wonderful job they are doing. 
And so there's plenty of cop suckers mm-hmm. out there. There certainly are. Yeah. But now I will say that KPD is probably one of the best, if not the best, police department I have ever interacted with. I mean, out of the people who have arrested me, you know, I've never been beat up by KPD. Right. You know, and no, I give him credit for that. I've done things in the square that, you know, if I'd done them back in Detroit, they'd have been clubbing us like baby seals. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean the fact that they're nice about it doesn't mean that they're not enforcing the same unjust laws that all the other police departments in the nation are and are uh, are enforcing, or at least a good portion of them. Enforcing marijuana laws, they're out there enforcing. Uh, prostitution laws. I tend to agree with your assessment, Rich, that the Keene police are a cut better than other cops, yeah. other police departments out there. That has been my experience. And I will compliment them when they do the right thing, too. If they're actually going after a violent criminal or something like that, I'd, I'll tell them thanks for doing the right thing in that particular case. I think it's important to give them feedback. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's go uh, back to Mike in Oregon. Mike, you're back on Free Talk Live. Uh, go ahead. What were you calling about tonight? Yeah, so I'm um, not too happy right now. Uh, I just had $432 stolen from me oh, no. by the state of Oregon. Yeah. Um, I, quote-unquote, owed them uh, money that I uh, didn't pay in during the year, uh, and uh, I just had to cut them a check for $432, and I'm not too happy Oof. about it. Is this and, like uh, an income like tax? I, uh, Oregon has got a, an income tax, yes. What's the percentage? Um, so I had, if you don't like oh, it, move to New I, Hampshire. I, <laughs> yeah. Move from New Somalia. Hampshire. There's always Somalia. <laughs> New Hampshire. Uh, uh, I don't know what the actual uh, percentage is. I can look that up later. But uh, either way, I mean, I'm still out. And the reason is I was working two jobs last year. And the other job, they only took like $20 out for the whole year. So it's like... You know, now I got to pay in, and it's like I've come to realize I'm like the reason I I supposedly owe all this money was because I actually did something that I felt was right, and <clears throat> I work for a car rental company out here. I, I clean out the rental cars, and I mm-hmm. vacuum out, make them look good, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's a ton of fun. Cool. And uh, I was working a, a lot of hours during the summer in the hot sun, long nights, and the way our union contract set up, anything over eight hours is considered overtime and also 40 hours. So, and I only make nine, like 925 an hour. So what I did was I claimed 12 on both state and federal. And it's like, I brought home a, I mean, granted I was getting some overtime, but I brought home a decent paycheck. Like every two weeks, I was able to put some money away. I was able to pay some bills off, mm-hmm. but, and I've come to the conclusion that you don't need a super high paying job and a college degree and all this to get, get some, uh, a decent amount of money, but because of the, the, the parasitic nature of this criminal gang called the state, we have to pay this now. So now you got to go out and get that high-paying job to make up for what's being stolen from you. And it is being stolen from you. It's not, being, it's not some sort of service you're getting in return because I've never used their services, nor do I ever want them. There might be services, but you can't provide services to people, um, and uh, you know, without them asking, and then yeah, I can't come payment. pay your ho- or paint your house and then demand you give me money. Right. If I come to your house and I paint it and then demand that you pay me what I want, wish to be paid, which is likely somewhere between one point five as much uh, or seven times as much, depending on the government program, sometimes even beyond that, then I'm some kind of lunatic thief. Um, but. If I and if I get some friends together, we're a lunatic gang of uh, you know crazy house painting thieves. Right. And but well, if I get everybody well, in, a, if I get a majority of people voting people in a geographic area to do it, we're just the government. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well, what's I mean, broken. That's something, that, uh, that's something that Ian, when you and your friends went to go talk to John McLean about that, about you know uh, about you know. Demanding uh, you pay for something that was, you know, that you didn't ask for, and he said, "Oh, it's not really like that at all." Remember that? You're talking about the city that's- manager of uh, yeah. Keene, New Hampshire, not the character from Die Hard, although they do have similar sounding names. Uh, but yeah, there was right. a conversation we had with John McLean uh, here in in uh, in Keene, 
several years ago that I put on video. And actually, a lot of people, I've had a few people tell me they really thought that was a good combo where we were discussing the, you know, where's the obligation to pay taxes and property taxes and, you know, kind of where that all comes from. And if we didn't, if we didn't have to pay these taxes, every dollar taken from the private sector and individuals is one less dollar that they actually have to put in to, you know, making their own property. Uh, look better, making their sure. house look better, making their, you know, but it, it, I just don't see it ever ending. <laughs> Yeah, I think I like to use um, for the best example is I have a son. He's seven years old. He's school age. We homeschool. But every twice a year, I've got to write a check to a group of people who the vast majority of their property taxes are spent sending other people to the worst school in town. I don't mm -hmm. actually know. Um, you know, there hasn't been any uh, studies. I hear that our public school is a pretty good one, but there's still another private school in town, and it is significantly less costly to send a kid there than it is to send one to our um, public school, so I think that it's yep. fair to call it the worst school, if because it can't possibly provide a better, you know, significantly better education than the the one that costs significantly less. So there's a bunch of people out there that are forcing me to pay to send their kids to the school I would never send my kid to. Now, Mike, I'm cu I'm curious. Uh, you moved from New Hampshire to move to Oregon. Uh, were you a New Hampshire native? Well, originally I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. And then moved from Boston to New Hampshire in 1984. So, uh, so were you? You were a kid back then, right? Yes. So this is your first time then moving to a state that has an income tax. That's got to be a shock to the system. Like I've, I've never had to deal with that. I lived my uh, young adult life in Florida, which doesn't have a state income tax, and then I moved to New Hampshire, which also does not have a state income tax, nor does it have a state state sales tax. Um, and you've right. moved from New Hampshire, sort of. Uh, into the fire, if you will, of uh, of Oregon, where they they actually have a state income tax, and I believe they also have a, a sales tax out there. Do they not? No. Okay. So the way it's set up oh, is don't. Oregon and Washington are are kind of mirror opposites. In Oregon, you have a you don't have any sales tax, you oh. just income tax. You cross the the river over into Washington, you have. Uh, no, you have a sales tax, but no income. Ah, very interesting. Right. So, well, yeah, thank you for the uh, the call tonight. I appreciate the info. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. It's got to suck moving from a state that has no income tax and then having to deal with that, like all kinds of new forms you've never seen before and new extractions of your wealth. It's got to be frustrating. Check out the Free State Project if you love liberty. Go to freestateproject.org and you can join the fun here in New Hampshire with other libertarians. It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. 
Here's a breaking medical legal alert. Attention, users of the diabetes drug Actos. If you or a loved one has taken Actos, then developed bladder cancer, or if a loved one has died from bladder cancer after taking Actos, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation from the pharmaceutical giants who made these drugs. Our experienced attorneys are dedicated to help you get the money you're entitled to, but time may be running out on this opportunity. So you must call today. The information is free. There are no fees unless we win your case. If you or a loved one has developed bladder cancer or something worse after taking the diabetes drug Actos, call right now and learn your legal rights. This is an advertisement not valid in all states. I am a paid non-attorney spokesperson. Call the tort attorneys 24-7 right now. 800-430-7924. 800-430-7924. That's 800-430-7924. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you're invited here to dial in toll-free to bring up whatever you want. Coming up, Liberty Maniacs, the t-shirt and cool stuff kind of printing company. Uh, they are back under fire legally, this time from the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, you remember the last time they were attacked for their NSA t-shirt, their yep. coffee cups. Uh, you know, They had this logo that made fun of the NSA. Well, now they've got another logo making fun of somebody, and uh, they're in, tr in some hot water. We'll tell you about that on the way here tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE+. Plus, more about the story about the young man who was, and I believe we've actually had Lucas Jewell on the show in the past. Uh, he used to be Adam Kokesh's manager a long time ago and now he's in Gainesville Florida and he was pulled over for flipping the cops off he was pulled over while the cops were in a bear cat uh, so we can come back to that story as well let's go to Tom first in Nashua New Hampshire Tom you're on free talk live hello there yeah there's a, a trend going on in Europe as I'm sure you've you've mentioned about the right to be forgotten what's that in mean which um, uh, well, public information that's on the Internet about you, uh, like it started with a guy who lives in Spain and his bankruptcy from so many years ago right. was in the newspaper and on their website. And <clears throat> he uh, filed a legal action against Google because anybody who types in his name would find out that it would be led to this news article from so many years ago about how he went bankrupt. And yes. he didn't like that, even though it was it was okay for a while, but he supposedly has this right to be forgotten. And so what happened was the, the European court actually ruled in his favor, which thereby made it so that Google, continuing in, to do business in Europe, uh, then started to implement a new policy that would actually allow people to contact them and demand <coughs> that uh, and demand that Google uh, remove the, the search results. And you know what the question would be before a Scottish court? I don't know. Is this a good joke? Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? <laughs> I think that's yeah. an Irish court. Thanks, Tom, Thanks. for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Um, this is yeah. This is a this right to be forgotten really only affects Google though. That's what's so That's silly about this is that you, uh, you you could use any other search in this search engine and find this guy's bankruptcy. This is really lick ridiculous. 
Well, it sounds like he can then turn around and sell and sue all of the other uh, search engines and get similar results. If if they ruled against Google that way under civil law, I would suspect they would rule the same way against uh, any other search engines. Many search engines don't actually aren't don't actually have bricks and mortar inside the country. Well, so. that's one of the important things is Google's such a large company. They have offices in a lot of different countries, and so I that's why I suggested when that when it happened. Not that anyone in charge of Google's listening to Free Talk Live, but. You know, I suggested that it would be in their best interest to just close up shop and leave Europe. Like, hey, you know, if you don't want us to be here providing the all these jobs to people, these uh, tech jobs to people in Europe, you know, because you want to tell us how to do our business, well, we'll just leave. We'll find some place that's more friendly. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason they have to be in Europe. They don't. I, this, the signal goes everywhere. Yeah, so. I can only imagine what it would be like if somebody from Brussels decides to write a letter to uh, Free Talk Live demanding that we no longer speak badly about the EU, and Ian receives that letter. How do you think that's going to go, Ian? Uh, we'd either read it on the air or I just throw it away. <laughs> right. I mean, like, you would know, would it brussel your jimmies? <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't brussel them at all. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be just amused. So you can share your thoughts. I think it's terrible what happened with uh, with Google. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and it was sad to just see them bend over. I mean, I guess I... I guess they didn't just bend over, right? They did fight it in court. They did their mm-hmm. best legally uh, to deal with this. But it's sad to see people just going ahead and, and jumping through the hoops. Like Amazon, they would have if they were Amazon in this case, Amazon has shut down distribution facilities, from what I understand. Like they've left the unfriendly tax kind of tax the internet states to to move their operations to more friendly places. That's what is my understanding of Amazon. And it would be nice to see Google take the same firm step. Yeah, I mean if the if the big companies are doing that, you know, they kind of have to uh stop enforcing that. You can't just uh I mean you could have all the large industry move out of your state, but if if industries really did stand up and say, Hey, we're not gonna be here if you're enforcing these crazy laws. They'd against change us, how they do they it. They would have to change. It's true. It's, it's a costly plan though. For um, a business to take a, a political risk like that? Yeah. So yeah. for one, um, you know, there there are plenty of pe- sycophants out there that'll side with the state and That's say right. I'm never gonna use Google again. They don't like my EU countries and stuff. You know, or whatever it is the hell they're talking about. I mean yeah. It, it, it amazes me the circular logic of these people and their inability to uh, their, their unwillingness to call in and articulate it. But um, nonetheless, it costs a lot of money to move an operation. Ian, if we decided to move some other place, even if it was just across the state in New Hampshire, it would be very costly. And we would manage to keep all of our personnel, but mm-hmm. Google's going to lose personnel in a uh, in a move in a major move of that's true. You know, one of their centers. So. They're, you know, they're they're giving up a lot if they choose to take that that uh, stand. What do they call it? Institutional memory or knowledge or something like that, where the, you know the the collection of all of the people who make up that institution, uh, they add all of this years of experience and and knowledge and yeah. understanding the product, and then if you just wipe out fifty uh, percent of that, that's a pretty big hit to the efficiency of that that company because they'd have to retrain people. In the computer business, they talk about bus value. Uh, and that the bus value of a of a programmer is how much is it going to cost the company if he gets hit by a bus? <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I've I've been in a position where it was literally my bus value was bankruptcy. If wow. I got hit by a bus, they were going to go bankrupt because I was their their only programmer. Well, yeah, the good it's... news, uh, Rich. Now your bus value here for Free Talk Live very low, very low. That's because I talk for free. <laughs> Pay him in wine. Ian's, frankly, isn't that high to uh, Free Talk Live anymore. I mean, what? no, I've, I've, I've made it so that people can do the stuff that I do um, in case something like that happens. You never know when that's going to happen. I'd say that uh, mine's a bit higher. I haven't managed to replicate myself in the uh, Free Talk Live sales sphere. But, um, you know. Well, if you are a hotshot salesman who uh, knows your stuff, maybe Mark will be <laughs> working with you when you move to New Hampshire. That'd be nice. You never know. Uh, so uh, let's get back to the story here about the bear cat. Again, it pulled. They pulled over a guy for flipping them the bird. The cops dressed up basically like a military, a paramilitary squad. They're all in green with camouflage, with the word sheriff emblazoned across their chest. They strapped with a weapon. Uh, you know, all kinds of. They got their dark sunglasses. The whole deal. I mean, they look like they. That might have just have ridden in from uh, a battle zone in the Middle East or something like that. 
Uh, the video is about 14 and a half minutes long. I'll link to the full story over on our Facebook and Twitter here in just a moment. But Lucas Jewell, who was their victim on this particular day, didn't let them get away with this. Uh, he pulled out a video device, looks you know, presumably like his phone, because uh, it's got that that sort of uh, vertical look to it, which is really annoying to me with with video when someone mm, holds their yeah. phone vertically instead of horizontally. I forget it all the time. I do video that way all the time and yeah. just forget. It's uh, the hallmark of uh, someone who hasn't practiced very much with it. Yeah. Um, but still, some video is better than no video, yes. and beggars can't be choosers. So I think the audio is more important than the video in most circumstances. It absolutely is. It, you can have blurry video, but if the audio is clear, it, it usually is more important unless something critical happens like, oh, I don't know, a cop planting a taser on someone has recently yeah, happened in really South important. Carolina. So if you can get both good audio and good video, then you're really knocking it out of the park. And in this case, he did get good audio and video. Like The video quality is dis- decent. You can see the he actually gets out of his car, which is a fairly risky thing to do, by the way. Agreed. Uh, because the cops, they get all antsy if you do things that are unusual. Like they're used to pulling you over and having you sit quietly and wait for them in the pass or the uh, the driver's side seat. Respect my authority. That's what they're used to. Um, they don't they don't like it when you just hop out and start pointing a camera at them. I mean that it's he may have put his own personal uh, life in a little more jeopardy uh, by making that decision, but. He got better video because of it, so he was able to, you know, get a shot of the Bearcat rolling up on him with the blue and red lights flashing on the light bar on the top, the whole deal. And he makes some comment about, you know, how ridiculous this is. So, as Virgil Vaduva points out over at TruthVoice.com, we can object to this gross display of military force aimed at limiting the free speech of an American, and we ask that you voice your op- opposition to this abuse by contacting the Alachua County Sheriff. Uh, and they've got a Facebook page and a toll-free number here. I'll, again, if you uh, link over to this on our Facebook page in Google, you can get that information. And then uh, they provide plenty of photos of these armed men with, uh, you know, like total. They look like, they, don't they look like they were, you know, just literally, they look like they're from the military. There's nothing about them that is that does not scream military except for the fact that it says sheriff across their chest. Well, I got to say it's it's this wannabe thing. I think it's two twofold. Um well, I maybe, think many of them were in the military. Yeah, maybe three. Mm. That's that's point 1. So they're they're used to it and comfortable. They they know that it's intimidating and that you know they they really wish that they were doing the military thing um, still because the military thing ca- carries with it this uh, you know this this element of danger. Police aren't in any danger generally from the public. It's not even one of the top ten most dangerous jobs. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts at eight fifty five four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. I'm a state-of-the-art 60-inch flat-screen TV. And I mean, not to brag or anything, but if a burglar ever breaks into this place, I'm pretty certain I'm the first thing he's going to steal. I mean, it's not like he's going to take that recliner over there. (laughs) Or that coffee table. (laughs) Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the Geico Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit geico.com today. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports Israeli officials are once again outraged and inconsolable after Russia reversed a long-standing ban on selling defensive missile systems to Iran. They're also pretty sure it's Obama's fault. Intelligence Minister Yuval Steinitz claimed that the reversal was a direct result of the U.S. agreeing to the P5 plus 1 nuclear framework with Iran, saying Iranian access to the defensive weaponry would increase aggression. Israel has long opposed the sale of the S-300, an anti-aircraft defense system, to Iran, arguing it would considerably inconvenience them in their oft-threatened plans to attack Iran. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov confirmed the reversal was a function of the framework agreement, noting the sale of the defensive missiles should no longer be a problem. U.S. officials, even if they are slightly more willing to go against Israel's wishes, but still feels the need to give lip service to Israel's will, and thus issued a statement condemning Russia, saying it was unhelpful to allow such sales. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports telephone service provider Sprint has agreed to pay $15.5 million in a settlement to the federal government for allegedly overcharging for wiretap services. Sprint was accused of overcharging the government by about 58% and earning $21 million in additional profits between 2007 and 2010 for conducting wiretaps. The government reimburses telecommunication companies like Sprint or AT&T for reasonable expenses whenever the government orders wiretaps. The government claimed Sprint violated Federal Communications Commission guidelines set up in 2006 by adding costs not covered under federal law, including the cost of financing modifications to equipment facilities and services installed to comply with the Communications Assistance for the Law Enforcement Act wiretapping law established in 1994. Sprint tapped phones for the FBI, the DEA, and other agencies. The company denied wrongdoing after the settlement was announced. The federal government reported 3,576 wiretaps were conducted in 2013, a 5% increase from the previous year. About 88% of those wiretaps in 2013 were related to narcotics. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a former Blackwater security guard was sentenced to life in prison and three others got 30-year terms on Monday in the massacre of 14 unarmed Iraqi civilians at a Baghdad traffic circle in 2007, closing a case that had outraged Iraqis and inflamed anti-U.S. sentiment around the world. The incident from September 2007 stood out for its brazenness and formed a tense backdrop to talks between the United States and Iraq over the continued presence of U.S. forces in Iraq. It also sparked debate over private security contractors working for the U.S. government in war zones. The four guards opened fire with machine guns and grenade launchers on the Iraqis, including women and children, at Nicer Square. A heavily armed four-truck Blackwater Worldwide convoy the men were in had been trying to clear a path for U.S. diplomats. Nicholas Slatton of Tennessee was convicted in October of killing the driver of a car the defendants had argued at trial they believed contained a bomb. Paul Slough of Texas, Evan Liberty, 
Liberty of New Hampshire and Dustin Hurd of Tennessee, who were convicted of manslaughter, were each sentenced to 30 years in prison, the mandatory minimum they could face. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. California is reeling from Super Rainbow Percival, which left a trail of devastation along the West Coast. A luminous band of destruction touched down in Santa Barbara. Percival set a record as the most powerful rainbow in U.S. history, with at least 30 confirmed fatalities and damage estimates in the billions. The vividly saturated colors seared through homes and roads, charring everything in its path. Those exposed to the rainbow's fury say they're lucky to be alive. The sky was completely blue. All of a sudden, it's filled with brilliant hues of red and indigo. All I can say is when I was a kid, <laughs> rainbows didn't cut people in half. Meteorologists say that Percival is just the latest in a pattern of increasingly dangerous rainbows and that they're only growing stronger as global temperatures rise. Percival also comes on the heels of some extreme weather phenomena overseas. Authorities in the Philippines are still searching for thousands in the aftermath of mega sunset Wilma. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You dial in toll free if you want. You can bring up anything at 855 450 free. The video is up right now on our Facebook and Twitter of the man being pulled over by a bear cat. You know, at least here in Keene, New Hampshire, unlike Gainesville, Florida, where this happened, at least here the cops feel like they have to make excuses for using their bear cat. There's a little more public pressure on them to kind of keep them accountable. Um, it sounds to me like there's not really any accountability of any sort going on in Gainesville, Florida, where the cops are just pulling people over with this thing that up here they're constantly talking about. It's just a rescue vehicle. We're only using it when we put our guys in harm's way. That's all the Bearcats for. They don't well, apparently have that same narrative in Gainesville. It's not like they were out looking for speeders in this thing. They were going down the road and they got flipped off. Yeah. They reacted in a sort of visceral, uh, vicious, uh, unprofessional way. And and they went ahead and pulled somebody over. Now, this vehicle could have been going to Bearcat training or coming back from Bearcat training or whatever. But this mm -hmm. is a really poor vehicle to go out and give tickets in. Uh, I don't know. It's really intimidating. We know the cops like to intimidate yes, people. Yes, but it costs a lot of money, and there's no good reason to use up budgets um, in that circumstance when you yeah, that's, that's and true. wear and tear. And it's on very bad PR wherever you are. Well, they don't care about that. I mean, obviously, they don't care about I, that. I don't know that they don't care about that. I mean, they certainly react to cameras. That's true. And, you know, one thing I was going to ask you about Keene Police Department, if you, you've been here longer than I have, mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, I have seen the police change in New Hampshire as a result of the Free State Project. And an example of that is you never hear about an open carrier getting randomly hassled anymore, Not anymore. in New Hampshire. It did happen in it the early days. It used to happen. Yeah. It happened to me. In Manchester back in the day, yep. I had them. They didn't actually stop me, but I had a cop follow me for mm -hmm. like. Uh, there's. I made a pork four one one call going. Yeah, this cop's been following me for wow. three blocks. Um, but has there been a change in the Keene Police Department since you've been here, or have they always been relatively mellow as cops go? Well. Um, my experience is, is that we've seen that they are no longer really doing the random bag checks of the college students. There was a big push again for the, from the activists to stop that. They generally allow videotaping in most places and are... Uh, you know, accommodating to videos, uh, videoers, videographers. Yeah, I had heard that they were a little more rough dealing with that in the early days. With well, the video. I can, well, I, I can tell you that it was uh, probably. 2007, we moved here in 2006, that I believe mm -hmm. I was the first uh, incident of sort of cop watching here in Keene where I just pulled out a camera and decided to, you know, video a, uh, a traffic pullover where there were a bunch of cops surrounding this one dude. Mm -hmm. And they gave me some trouble about that. They're like, we're protecting his uh, his uh, privacy. He's on the side of the road in daylight. You're doing a terrible, terrible job. You know, this is just a chilling effect on people using cameras yeah. on cops. Uh, but uh, they, you know, they have not done that since. Hmm. They learned their lesson, and um, they're not doing it anymore. Yeah, I, I would say, Rich, you're right that the lessons were learned by the police fairly early on. That uh, you know, hey, let them let just let them record. You know, it looks worse when you don't. 
that kind of thing. Do they still hassle people for hats in courtrooms? You know, um, I believe you probably would get some trouble for that in Keene District Court, but the Manchester Court is completely different. They don't seem to care that I've seen people yeah. wearing hats in, in Manchester, and it's fine there. And, so, of course, Keene, we never stand up, and they never correct. gave us a problem about that. I think they did, they did at first until a couple people claimed to be Quakers. The old judge, no, I don't think that ever happened in court. Uh, well, maybe it did. It might, yeah, I think Dale might have done that once. But the uh, the old judge in uh, Superior Court here threatened and actually arrested, threatened Mark, and actually arrest, or that was over your son being loud, but no, that was the new judge who threatened you over your yeah, son. That was Kissinger. Sorry, the old judge uh, threatened you, Rich, for wearing a Ron Paul t-shirt once, I think, if you remember that. Oh, well, the bailiffs did have me turn my Ron Paul t-shirt right. inside out. Wasn't that at my trial? I forget where that where that one was. I I don't know. I think it was. It was. And uh, and then it was also uh, in late 2010, I believe, or no, 2012. Anyway, it's on to some extent over at uh, Derek J's victimless crime spree in in that movie. Uh, Kelly Voluntarist and Jason Talley were arrested for not standing up for the judge in Superior Court. But after uh-huh. that judge left the bench, it hasn't been an issue. That was Arnold, right? That's correct. I didn't like Arnold. There's a long history of uh, abuse of power here in in Keene, and we've uh, documented all of it over at freekeen.com. It's really uh, quite the compendium of ridiculous behavior of government bureaucrats. Certainly one of the things that we've done the best over on freekeen.com over the years is really chronicle just the just the absolutely outrageous abuses of power, many of which have gone unchecked. I mean, there's you know there's, you're still at risk if you walk into that courthouse with a video camera. If you walk in there with a video camera, you can take the camera into the courtroom, but if you're recording video in the courthouse, you may very well get arrested for contempt of court here mm-hmm. in Keene. So that, there's still some, uh, you know, battles that haven't been won but for the most part outside of the courthouse building you can pretty much record anywhere in in keen the thing they like to say with the uh in the uh with the cameras in the court building is is uh you know there's always they try the out children. The, the rape victim thing um mm-hmm. what if there's a lady in here who's testifying against a rapist uh, the question i'd have for that was when was the last time that happened uh because we don't have a lot of uh, trials that's true generally most and yeah, most jury people selection was canceled this month yeah most people mm. just plead out but okay um assuming there's an activist that just wants to chase around recently molested women um which i have not yet seen yet it's nonsense um then i suppose that might be an issue but that's not really what they're here for you know we all know that the activists are here to videotape people who work for the government yeah yeah exactly the other excuse mark is the the children and that's the one i hear more frequently i haven't really heard them claim rape victims very often as their reason for banning cameras but the uh, the usual claim is well there's juveniles there's juvenile cases in this court and we can't just have people recording children uh, which well, of course they can record could, children on the street. Well, that's but, right. That's my point. That's why it's all just show. That's why it's all well, um, you a juvenile. Know. A, a juvenile case is protect has some legal legal protections. But they're not protected as soon as they leave the courthouse. So if you want to record all the kids going into juvie court, you can just stand outside the courthouse and record every single one of them that walks mm. in, and that's completely legal. So you're right, Mark. It's just an excuse. It's a cover for them disallowing the recording and the holding of of these bureaucrats accountable. They. Uh, Every clerk, every security agent in that building is precluded from being held accountable unless you're willing to risk contempt of court for recording video. And there have been instances, Garrett, Ian, myself, where, you know, we'll walk from like one room to another and we'll have the camera out. No one will say anything. Um, so it has happened. The, For instance, the security agents on the district court floor are more likely to look the other way about a video camera being used than the sheriff's security agents who handle the superior court floor. Those guys get all kinds of hot and bothered about a video camera being uh, used in their court I love facility. how they combine these two courts in the same building, but they just can't figure out how to combine the bailiff organizations. So we couldn't possibly let one of these guys go, one of these retirees that's now done double dipping for the pension. Yeah. Um, we couldn't possibly let a single one of them go and save the taxpayers some money. It's really important that we have two different organizations on two different floors. I suspect that's probably because they're operating out of separate budgets because the people who cut the budget don't necessarily assume they'll be sharing a building. One's a state organization. The other is the county. Yeah, but of course you could have a single uh, security organization and just charge them like what percentage of 
estimated the use of your services. Yeah, I bet they could probably hire like private security for the building and do it a lot cheaper. Not that I would necessarily, you know, not that that would necessarily be better. I I don't know. The toll free number here is eight fifty five four fifty free because I don't support I don't support the idea of taking government functions necessarily and handing them over to a business monopoly. I I mean you can argue that might be better in some ways than having the government monopolize that service. But in other ways, yeah, maybe they would, maybe they would claim they wouldn't have the same level of trend. They wouldn't have to have the same level of transparency, for instance. Yeah, well, a private governments company. can use because it's always been recognized that government is a dangerous, dangerous thing. There are some special uh, checks on the behavior of people working for the government that that don't necessarily carry over to contractors. So, yeah, in some cases you would actually lose some some transparency and some rights if if they brought in contractors. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts 855 450 free coming up Liberty Maniacs under attack again in the court system. These are guys that make t-shirts and some of them are pretty funny. Apparently, some people didn't like the joke. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Retrievers, Labradors, Goldens are the main breeds that come through our door, but we'll train anything with four legs and a tail. My husband and I train hunting dogs and also have a boarding and grooming business. And our dogs, they're athletes. that are cooked out of regular dog food. Dynavite's the bomb. We tell everybody we know about Dynavite. Just feed your dog right, use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite, it's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Uh, and you can enjoy all the features on our website for free at freetalklive.com. Also free, ProXPN. You go and grab their app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS, Android, Linux, whatever you're using. They probably have an app for you. And it will help protect you online because, well, people are trying, probably when you're out and about at like a coffee shop or something, some people might be trying to sniff your Wi-Fi packets, maybe to gather certain identifying information about you, perhaps credit card numbers and things like that. Your internet service provider is probably saving your surfing history, in some cases for as many as five years, and then doing who knows what with it, maybe selling it or giving it away to governments, for instance. You can protect yourself by encrypting your data online, and ProXPN will provide you that service. You can just go and get started for free right now at ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. We've got a discount code as well when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Use code FTL50 to save 50% off the price of the annual account over at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So go and check out proxpn.com slash FTL, and don't forget promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to the phones and to the fun We've got Brett listening in Baltimore. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Brett. Hey there, guys. How are you doing tonight? Super. Go ahead with your thoughts. All right. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys about this. Uh, have you heard of, like, the, the collective consciousness in terms of, like, uh, psychedelic uses of those kind of substances? Are you talking about the union <laughs> collective unconscious? I've heard of right, the, but like the, Yeah, I've heard of collective yeah. consciousness. Sure. Yeah, I was just... Because I was just... I know I watch a few trip reports online. I've never tried it, but it seems like an overarching theme. I'm wondering if you guys think there could actually be any kind of tangible thing. Well, Rich, uh, I suspect you've uh, done more psychedelics in your time than uh, than I have. What are your thoughts on the collective consciousness, and can you define it? Um, well, the Jungian collective uh, conscience or uh, the idea of uh, racial memory was that there was some sort of knowledge that was held collectively by all humans. I've never seen any evidence of that. Um, mm. You know, I uh, my consciousness has always been individual. Yeah. I don't, maybe socialists have collective conscience. Maybe so. I can tell you that in, in my psychedelic experience, I have had moments where I have felt at one with the universe, but I can't say right. I've been... Uh, you know, I can't say that I've been tapped into the consciousness of another human being, you know, that I in any way was aware of anything like that. Uh, but I do understand the concept of a collective consciousness, the idea being that sort of uh, humanity is manifesting into the world uh, what it believes, basically, on a collective basis. That, you know, essentially it's the argument that people get the government they deserve, essentially, that uh, that the government that we have is a reflection of sort of the collective consciousness of the people, not necessarily individually, because obviously we who don't necessarily like the idea of the state would say, well, we don't deserve this. But overall, there is a lot of love for the idea of the state. There's a lot of belief in the concept of the state. And so people are getting what they believe in, ultimately. Right. Yeah, I, did, I did a little bit of research on like the Wikipedia page, and it's apparently the whole idea started with like a German idealist uh, philosopher back in like the late 1800s. And I tried to like 
move away from the whole idea of the collective conscious, which is like the oneness of being, you know, like you said, like the oneness with the universe is what a lot of like these trip reports go around talking about, but then also, you know, how you industry of life and, uh, <laughs> and uh, also what I'm sorry, it's a little, mu- you're a little muffled. It's hard to understand. you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I was saying I've researched the whole idea of it on the Wikipedia, on like Wikipedia. And apparently the whole, the whole thing came from like a German idealist philosophers where it said that it started at, which isn't surprising based on like just the terminology that they're using. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know libertarians tend to bristle at the idea of a collective consciousness or the idea that uh, all people are connected. And and thanks, Brett, for your call tonight. Uh, I think you know I think the libertarians out there don't tend to really like that idea. But I have to say that you know I I like the concept personally. I think that we're all part of God essentially, and that we are individuations of this one greater consciousness. Um, but that, what that effect does that have connected. and what connection is there? I don't know. I would say that that connection's basically emotional, and which is a good thing. I think that emotions are great, and that's the reason we have them, is, is they give a sort of meaning and purpose to our lives. Um, but I just haven't figured out yet um, how this can possibly sort of be true. Uh, and I would now remind everybody uh, that there's a collective unconsciousness I would, and that there's some way to tap into this other than sort of taking some drugs and feeling like, I am at one with the well, universe. Well, I'm not just taking drugs. I mean, meditation. There's uh, yep. people who meditate who Fine. who claim to have experiences very, very similar to the psychedelic brain, experiences. The brain mm-hmm. uh, produces its own drugs, too, and you can tap into them in a variety of ways. Mm-hmm. But I would remind everybody of the James Randi challenge where you can go get yourself a, a fresh million dollars by proving that you've got some kind of supernatural thing. So if you can in some way or another... Uh, you know, tap into my mind and see the things that I see or whatever, you can prove that and get a million bucks. I've never heard anyone I, make that claim. Yeah, see, I would object even to the word supernatural because basically if something exists, it exists in the universe and is therefore natural. Yep. If there are ghosts, there are they are a natural, not a supernatural phenomena. We just don't know why. Right. I've never seen evidence that there are ghosts. But. Well, we have to have a term. We have to have terminology for things that we uh, don't agree are. We don't all agree are true, and mm-hmm. um, you know, like there's just uh, supernatural is a term that sort of describes some things: ghosts, UFOs, the ability to divine water, where water is. Um, you know, mm-hmm. the uh, transubstantiation. Uh, you know, there's just a bunch of things out there, kind of fit under this big umbrella called supernatural. Yeah, although, of course, UFOs wouldn't be supernatural. They'd just be another ordinary organism that had superior technology to ours. I think Um, that mm -hmm. it seems very clear to me that uh, there must be life on other planets. I just don't know if if they've uh, traveled to Earth, whether it's very likely that anybody's actually seen them. If we found conclusively that there was not life elsewhere in the universe, I would think there must be a God. Yeah, that would be amazing. Because if it happens randomly once, it should happen randomly more than once. Now, petroleum, I think, is probably rarer in the universe than intelligent life. And it may well be that without petroleum, a society can't advance to what mankind has done. I so thought that, that Jupiter's, uh, Saturn's moon Titan had had a whole bunch of uh, oil on it. Uh, there was a meme going around Facebook that suggested that they needed some freedom with a, a glaring uh, eagle. Mm. Um, <laughs> which, see, that's there. weird because my understanding is that oil is a breakdown uh, product of organic Dinosaurs? life. So nope. are they then saying that there was organic life? That's on why they call Jupiter's it a fossil moon? fuel, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, how would they know there's oil up there anyway? Like looking at it? I don't. Well, there's I, Texans. <laughs> I can go ahead and research it a bit more. I remember yeah. reading an article, but it's been some time. There's more on the way here in moments. You can share your thoughts with us on uh, these sort of metaphysical matters, if you like. Anything goes here on Free Talk Live, 855 453. More coming up. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You're invited here to dial toll-free and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features you'll find waiting for you there. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, throw some Bitcoin in our Bitcoin tip jar. You can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com and you will find the Bitcoin tip jar information there. Plus, we are now accepting, oh, over about two dozen other cryptocurrencies. These altcoins like Litecoin, Dogecoin. Uh, let's see. There's another one, uh, Nextcoin, NXT, 
There's Pure Coin, I think, uh, Name Coin. I'm just trying to go off the top of my head here. There's literally two dozen of them that will accept over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Thanks to shapeshift.io for making it easy uh, for us to accept all those altcoins and turn them automatically into Bitcoin. Now, if you don't yet have any Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin, you can go and get them from expresscoin.com. It's a great way to get into Bitcoin, or if you're already into Bitcoin, get some more of them. Uh, because the price has been down the last several days in the Bitcoin universe. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they're a licensed money services business at ExpressCoin.com. You can be in the United States or Canada, send them money order, check, or wire transfer, and they will send you Bitcoin back. And you can do it very affordably there. Their fees are the best I've seen in the business. Plus, if you use coupon code FTL, you'll get up to $40 worth of the cryptocurrency of your choice with no fee at all. So what a great way to get started in Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Pay no fee to get your first Bitcoin if it's less than $40 worth by using code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. That's code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. I mentioned Liberty Maniacs. This is a t-shirt making company. We actually had the head of this organization on our show. It seems like it's uh, maybe about a year ago. Sounds about right. Where he was under fire for a T-shirt that he had made up making fun of the NSA. This was, you know, during the aftermath of all the explosion of news brought on by Edward Snowden, the former NSA contractor who in the summer of 2013 went public with all kinds of uh, shocking, for some people, revelations about the NSA spying on you, spying on Americans and people all around the world. So he made a pretty funny graphic uh, poking fun at the NSA, and they went after him for it. Ultimately, he won that case, and this is now his latest blog post, posted, I believe, just the other day. His NSA shirt, by the way, said it had the NSA logo, or what appeared to be the NSA logo, with like an eagle and then the, the sort of the star circle thing around it. National Security Agency, peeping while you're sleeping is what it says around the circle. And then below that it says, the NSA, the only part of government that actually listens. So, you know, nice. it's, it's pretty cute. Um, and he won. He says, I feel, though, like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day, however. Seriously, he says, just months after my First Amendment case against the NSA and the Department of Homeland Security was settled in victory, legal representatives from Ready for Hillary, PAC, one of these political action campaigns. Committee. Committee? Well, oh, whatever. Anyway, they've decided to issue takedown orders for parodies I did of the Ready for Hillary campaign. The whole thing started as a play off the recent study by Martin Guilens and Benjamin Page that outlined how America's political system has become an oligarchy. Most of us had assumed this was largely the case, figuring that well-funded, powerful elites largely ran the show in America, while the rest of us watched on the sidelines of power without any real influence. What made their study pretty remarkable was they actually proved it after 10 years of research. So, you know, the idea being that we've already had George Bush. Now Jeb Bush is entering into the race. We've had Bill Clinton. And now Hillary Clinton is back in the race. So the suggestion there being, hey, it's the same families coming back again and again. Oligarchy. Can you imagine the depression that's going to set in if it's really a Bush running against a Clinton because that would be like there's no way out of that I mean I'll, I'll of course I'll vote libertarian yeah, sure. but uh you know that doesn't mean they're gonna win although maybe that lineup will horrify people enough to wake up yeah I, I think know. that it might be the very best <laughs> option for just sort of giving America a wake-up call about how messed up our political system is is if we have a Clinton and a Bush running again because I just you know I I, I would imagine you'd have the lowest turnout in decades. But yeah. that, uh, but by the way, I don't th I don't consider low turnout to be any sort of victory. There's many of the the sort of principled non-voters out there that think that that means something, and it doesn't mean crap. Um, no, it doesn't mean. I crap consider so low turnout of Democrats and Republicans and high turnout of Libertarians to be a victory. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> and maybe the Libertarians, maybe we'll get lucky, and the Libertarians will actually pick somebody who's a real Libertarian, somebody mm -hmm. who's got the chops. I know our very own Daryl W. Perry is planning on running for. Uh, the Libertarian nomination. So we'll see. I, uh, how that see, I out. like Gary Johnson. I think he's a great guy. He's. I not, think he's likable too. Well, I not, just don't think he's really a Libertarian. Well, he's not. I mean, he. You have to be unprincipled enough to get elected. Sadly, but you're not going to get elected and, as a Libertarian. 
well, you you know, maybe that would change with a Bush versus Clinton uh, <laughs> race. I mean, maybe that would be what it would take people maybe. to stick up the And duopoly. maybe that's why they won't do it. Maybe you're, that's why. You're not going to get elected unless you attempt to get elected. That's for sure. And so starting yeah. out. But you're with not a, also, you're also just not going to get elected as a libertarian. I mean, they've I stacked the, the decks against you. You're on, you're not allowed in the debates. Uh, mm. You might as well just be completely marginalized. You might be lucky to get an interview on uh, MSNBC or Fox News like once during the entire campaign. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm down in the libertarians. I'd vote for the guy too, whoever or the gal, whoever mm. the libertarians end up deciding to run. Odds are good I will vote for that person. Although uh, when they ran Bob Barr, I actually ran. I actually voted for George Phillies, who was running yeah. uh, as a libertarian in only in New Hampshire. So we actually did have another libertarian choice on the if ballot. If I'd been in New Hampshire, I would have voted the same way. I held my nose and voted for Bob Barr Ugh, that I that didn't had to be like tough. it. I, yeah. yeah, I actually met the guy. He bought me a, a cigar oh, in, really? uh, in uh, South Carolina no, after that's a fundraiser. It <laughs> uh, seemed like a... Well, I mean, people people at the same time seem to think. I mean, the the really rabid don't vote people. Uh, this the here, this will get the phone lines running. The really rabid uh, don't vote people will tell you simultaneously that your vote is meaningless. And at the same time, they'll say it's the worst thing you could possibly do. Well, how right. can it be both? <laughs> <laughs> right, because they argue that by voting, you're somehow endorsing the system. Right. Uh, yeah, and I I very much uh, go with Lysander Spooner on on his uh, his theory of voting, which was that no, it you can do it in self defense. It's not consent. You know, if you're voting for somebody who wants more government, that I that could be interpreted as consent. But if you're voting to Right. For somebody who's at least claiming he's going to stop some of this stuff from happening, that's just self-defense. Well, um, I agree. yeah, so I would say that there's two different types of voting. There's the voting on an issue. You know, they'll have these referendums. They'll have these, uh, you know, amendments or whatever mm -hmm. they come up. And, you know, if you're saying – if you're voting against – a new tax increase or some other, uh, you know, growth of government. I can't see how any principled non-voter would claim that you're being aggressive in any way, shape, or form. I would love to hear that argument. I can see how they can say even if you choose, uh, you know, the, the 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 best option of candidates, that uh, that person is highly unlikely to. Uh, be able to make a pro-liberty choice every single time on every single issue. So therefore, you're endorsing some kind of force against some kind of person. But in that circumstance, what I would say is is that you fall into the self-defense category is, look, I get one vote. I would be, at the very least, allowed to choose what is best for me in that circumstance. I know there's going to be a politician elected come November 2016, so... Uh, it's reasonable that I would be able to make some kind of choice at that point in self-defense. Uh, let's continue the story here from, again, Liberty Maniacs, the clothing uh, manufacturer. Anyway, he's saying that he's been threatened now with a cease and desist by the Hillary PAC. Ready for Hillary PAC. They had their, themselves a campaign, and he made fun of them. Uh, so he'd seen some of these bumper stickers for Ready for Hillary, and it drove him up the wall. He said, really, America? Hillary Clinton? We're going to go there? But when the media began to pump the story of Jeb Bush possibly running for president in 2016, making the possibility of a Clinton versus Bush 2 election, enough was enough. And so we'll tell you what uh, he came up with here in moments, because it's pretty cute. 855, 450 free, and then what happened on the way? The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose -nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Use as directed. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. 
Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Attention taxpayers. If you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 877-345-7645. That's 877-345. 345-7645. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately at 1-877-345-7645. That's 1-877-345-7645. 1-877-345-7645. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free at 855 450 free. And if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. We can use your five bucks a month to invest into Free Talk Live, get our show on more radio stations, expose new people to the ideas of freedom. That's what we do with your five bucks. And or you can send more than five if you'd like. You get perks either way. And that gives you access to things like the AMP Only Facebook group. Uh, there's also the AMP Only Forum, the AMP Only Podcast. Go and get all the details and get signed up. And please, it makes a big difference for us when you do that because it helps us market the show more effectively to radio stations so we can be more sort of out there and top of mind for radio program directors who you never know when they're going to need to make a change. All of a sudden, uh, our station in Indianapolis, WIBC, just announced two days ago they're dropping Rush Limbaugh from their station. And that's nice. yeah, couldn't it's happen big. to a nicer guy. <laughs> it's big news because, you know, Rush is still the number one talk show that the number one talk station in Indy would drop what was ostensibly a very popular show. It's I've, a huge change. I have never asked you this, Ian, uh, but uh, this is uh, so Rush built talk radio as it exists today. I think that that's that would be a pretty uh, industry wide opinion. Would you agree? 
Yeah, sure. Okay. It was a trailblazer in that way, yeah. His, uh, what, probably three-year-old comment at this point about Sandra Fluke uh, being a slut. You familiar with yeah, this one? that's right. This is what sort of set talk radio on its ear as far as advertising goes. A lot of advertisers bailed out. Yeah, they said they don't want to be associated with controversial content. Yeah, um, because of this comment. And... Free talk it didn't live. really hurt us, did it? Oh, yeah, it did. Really? Absolutely, it did, yeah. I figured we were so small, it wouldn't have... No, no, none of our advertisers would have been sort we of lost bothered e- by that. We lost everything as far as network advertising, oh, or wow. as, as far as, uh, uh, not network, but um, agency advertising went. I mean, just about everything went away. I'm sure many agencies shut their doors, too, or, mm. or focused on other, um, you know, other ad venues besides talk radio. Um, but do you think it's time... Do you think that Rush Limbaugh would the industry be better if Rush Limbaugh just shut his uh, you know shut off the mic and went and, and really enjoyed those many millions of dollars he's earned? The world would be better. <laughs> um, do I think it's time? Well, you didn't even know that we uh, didn't have the uh, the the ad revenue coming in from these agencies. That shows how well you're plugged in there. So I don't well, even know I always, these questions of any value any longer. Aren't these? I mean, the agencies you're talking about are usually just cheapy spots like our leftovers, right? No, that's not no? that's not correct at all. Okay. No. See, once again, I really once don't again, know anything. You know, I, I guess I'm done asking this question to you. Sign the check. I'm going to go ahead and say that yes, that's the case. That uh, Rush, it's time for him to go. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh has uh, too big for his britches. Outlived. Well, I, I just think that too big for almost any britches on earth. He's lost a lot of weight, though. Has he? Yeah, he's oh. not fat Rush like he used to be. He's I like skinny dope dope head Rush now. I have oh, no. Is he still popping those Percocets? Come on, of course. I mean, I don't know for sure. I don't know the guy, but what do you think? I, the fact that he did not denounce the drug war after that happened to him he's disgusts a, me. Yeah, he's a scumbag. It's, I like, can see really? that upset you both. Uh, but it's. Um, I, I frankly don't care about his weight or his drug use. He's also hard to listen to. I don't like listening to his voice anymore. I'm not saying I've got the best voice for radio, but he's changed since he went deaf. He's gotten a lot more shrill. Nah, I, don't, I think I, I don't find that. I listen to him on a relatively regular basis. If I'm no? going in town, I don't. Maybe find it's because he to be lost weight. I don't like or dislike his show any more than I used to like or dislike his show. I don't have any uh, preference that way. I'm just saying that. Look, um, the aver- the industry out there that advertises wants somebody crucified, and until they get their body, mm. um, they're going to continue to withhold the funds. It could be. Another half decade until the money begins to tr- trickle back in, but talk radio doesn't need that, and it's it's either Rush who's going to have to make the decision, and I don't think he's got what it takes uh, to step down for the good of the industry. Why should he? Now he's going to go all the way to the bitter end. Or I it's suspect. or it's so the you're programmers it, themselves. So you're saying he got shrill after he lost the weight? Could it be that he was all about the base? Let's and go. now he's got some trouble. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. Jericho's in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jericho. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, good. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, I had a little bit of a comment, I guess, followed by a question. All right. <laughs> um, I think myself, along with many millions of others, are quite frustrated with the whole election process and whatever you want to call it there, maybe call it a coronation process. <laughs> But uh, it, it really came to a head with me in 2012. You had the Republican primaries and, of course, a lot of people in the field and everything else, including the great Ron Paul. And personally, I think Ron Paul was the best one on the stage out of everybody. Oh, yeah, hands there. down. It, especially Mitt Romney. And, of course, Mitt Romney got the got the nomination. I think mm-hmm. it was predetermined from the get-go. That's who the media pushes. That's who the, the RNC pushes. And, and personally— you know, Ron Paul wasn't as polished and clean and, you know, whatever as Barack Obama, but if he got down to a real debate about the Constitution and how things should operate, he could have wiped the floor with Obama. Absolutely. Ron Paul would have won. I think Ron Paul could have won had he been uh, nominated. Yeah, I would agree. But the problem is they don't give anybody a chance. You mentioned a few minutes ago you're not allowed to debate, all this other stuff. One thing that stuck in my mind and still does, Ron Paul won the Iowa straw poll, I believe it was, hands down in 2012. And it's always all, okay, Ron Paul won the straw poll, but look at this guy and this guy and this guy. Yeah. They just swept it under the rug. Mm-hmm. They didn't care at all. Libertarians and really any other third-party candidate, not just libertarians, I don't think have a chance to get elected right now. How do we take it to the world, <laughs> so to speak? I guess this is where my question comes in. How, how do we get 
you know, the Ron Pauls, the Libertarians, or any other third-party type person? How do we get people to get away from the, the Democrats and the Republicans and see that they're the ones doing all the damage? Well, I'm you, a member of a— fr- I'm here. Oh, good. Okay, I'm a member of the Free State Project, and our answer to that has been you concentrate your force in one place where you can get a hell of a lot of voices uh, raised at the same time in the same place so that <clears throat> other people are hearing those messages again and again uh, in that one area, and you try to spread uh, to spread your message that way because we're so uh, dispersed throughout throughout America that you know it seems like there are no libertarians out there. I had mm-hmm. a few libertarian friends when I lived in in Michigan, but most of them I made libertarians. You know, I had to make my own friends. Mm-hmm. You know, find this raw material, make libertarians out of them, and then find out if I like them. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> You know, and he, you know, so so that's been our answer to that is to and it's working. write off. It does seem to be working in that you know we're getting more and more actual political influence here, right? And if we can actually implement some of the changes that we want, and things in New Hampshire get better, then that becomes a, a showcase for the world. So you can't. So that's walk been through. my answer. Yeah, I totally agree. You cannot walk through the New Hampshire State House mm-hmm. without running into people that you know. If you've been here for mm-hmm. a few years and you're, you know, you work and you know the people within the Liberty community, you go and you socialize with people in the community. You'll meet mm-hmm. some of these state reps who are Free State Project participants who've been elected. Some of them mm-hmm. elected multiple times. What we have, uh, I think it was Carol who was on with us uh, from the Liberty Forum. Yep. she's been elected for now her fourth term or something like that. She's been at it for Carol McGuire. Carol McGuire, yeah. So I mean, some have been on there for one term. Some have been for multiple terms. I mean, it's you don't go to your state house in uh, in Virginia there and say hello to people that you know. You don't know who they well, are. And they don't care. Them are anarchists. Right. <laughs> right, and they don't Only care who you are. But well, I've exactly. got. I, I think it's just what it boils down to. You guys included, millions and millions of us are sick and tired of voting for the lesser of two evils. Sure. And you got, you, this guy's picked for you, and this guy's picked for you, and, and we have to somehow get away from this. Mm-hmm. It, it just. You know, it's who the DNC and the RNC says is running, and who you like doesn't matter. I mean, I told my wife, I'm, I'm seriously, I, literally, I'm a quarter mile from my voting booth where mm-hmm. I go to vote, and to me, it's not worth the not trip it, up the road. Yeah. Well, well, as a personal favor to me, would you drive down there and vote Libertarian? Because I get a little <laughs> smile every time there's a vote for the Libertarians. Well, I vote that- in the in the in the primaries, I vote for who I like, which could be a libertarian. You know, it could be what you know. I vote for who I like. Libertarians aren't going to be in the primary, so generally, what a libertarian no. will do is they will uh, pick their own candidates mm-hmm. at their convention, and then they send their right. candidates on to the general election. Primaries are typically contests between just the major parties. Now, now, let me ask you a quick question. Your yeah. opinion on something. Uh, something that's thrown out quite a bit, especially by Republicans, is when you vote for the – oh, gosh, I forget the guy's name now. 92, that was the third guy. Anderson. And, Perot, you know, Ross no, Perot. Perot. Yeah, okay. You, you vote for him or you know, you vote for a third-party guy. Basically, you're giving your vote to the other side. Yeah, yeah it's and, called and the wasted vote it, syndrome. I, I, yeah, the, the wasted the vote I, syndrome. I'm not – I'm not fond of Republicans anymore either, really. But at the end of the day, I'd vote for a Republican before I would a Democrat. Well, and, the idea and, and behind I, I that is that they own your vote and they don't. You do. That's a good point. Jericho, thanks oh, for the call. Definitely. We can talk more about wasted vote syndrome in moments. You can also bring up anything on Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. 
Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. A L C O R dot O R G. Mention my name and I get a free year of membership. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at Africa. Dot LRN dot FM. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. Africa dot LRN dot FM. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports Israeli officials are once again outraged and inconsolable after Russia reversed a long-standing ban on selling defensive missile systems to Iran. They're also pretty sure it's Obama's fault. Intelligence Minister Yuval Steinitz claimed that the reversal was a direct result of the U.S. agreeing to the P5 plus 1 nuclear framework with Iran, saying Iranian access to the defensive weaponry would increase aggression. Israel has long opposed the sale of the S-300 an anti-aircraft defense system to Iran, arguing it would considerably inconvenience them in their oft-threatened plans to attack Iran. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov confirmed the reversal was a function of the framework agreement, noting the sale of the defensive missiles should no longer be a problem. U.S. officials, even if they are slightly more willing to go against Israel's wishes, but still feels the need to give lip service to Israel's will, and thus issued a statement condemning Russia, saying it was unhelpful to allow such cells. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports telephone service provider Sprint has agreed to pay $15.5 million in a settlement to the federal government for allegedly overcharging for wiretap services. Sprint was accused of overcharging the government by about 58% and earning $21 million in additional profits between 2007 and 2010 for conducting wiretaps. The government reimburses telecommunication companies like Sprint or AT&T for reasonable expenses whenever the government orders wiretaps. The government claimed Sprint violated Federal Communications Commission guidelines set up in 2006 by adding costs not covered under federal law, including the cost of financing modifications to equipment facilities and services installed to comply with the Communications Assistance for the Law Enforcement Act wiretapping law established in 1994. Sprint tapped phones for the FBI, the DEA, and other agencies. The company denied wrongdoing after the settlement was announced. The federal government reported 3,576 wiretaps were conducted in 2013, a 5% increase from the previous year. About 88% of those wiretaps in 2013 were related to narcotics. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a former Blackwater security guard was sentenced to life in prison and three others got 30-year terms on Monday in the massacre of 14 unarmed Iraqi civilians at a Baghdad traffic circle in 2007, closing a case that had outraged Iraqis and inflamed anti-U.S. sentiment around the world. The incident from September 2007 stood out for its brazenness and formed a tense backdrop to talks between the United States and Iraq over the continued presence of U.S. forces in Iraq. It also sparked debate over private security contractors working for the U.S. government in war zones. The four guards opened fire with machine guns and grenade launchers on the Iraqis, including women and children, at Nicer Square. A heavily armed four-truck Blackwater Worldwide convoy the men were in had been trying to clear a path for U.S. diplomats. Nicholas Slatton of Tennessee was convicted in October of killing the driver of a car the defendants had argued at trial they believed contained a bomb. Paul Slough of Texas, Evan Liberty of New Hampshire, and Dustin Hurd of Tennessee, who were convicted of manslaughter, were each sentenced to 30 years in prison, the mandatory minimum they could face. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Months after identifying the elusive Higgs boson particle, scientists at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland have announced that they've completely run out of things to do with their Large Hadron Collider. We've tried some time travel stuff, but it doesn't really work. Black holes, but we already know like a ton about those. Last week, we threw a bird in there. Honestly, we thought it would take way longer to find the Higgs boson. Director General of CERN Rolf Dieter Hauer told reporters that while they, quote, might be able to figure out some more about quarks or something, for the most part, his team has spent much of the past year throwing pennies into the machine and turning it on to see if the pennies come out smushed. We might just start building a larger hadron collider. Yeah, maybe a bigger collider for smaller hadrons or something. I don't know. CERN has announced on their website that if anyone out there has any fun ideas for experiments, you can email them to ideas at largehadroncollider.com. is the Onion News Network. Welcome back to more Free Talk Live. Coming up, we'll tell you about a bumper sticker design, a t-shirt design as well, that has gotten uh, the designer in some legal hot water. He's uh, made fun of the Hillary campaign, and now they're coming after him. So actually, actually, he's you know, also a Liberty guy, so he's sort of kind of making fun of uh, the Jeb Bush thing at the same time. But we'll explain more about that here in a moment. Also, we got to talk about the wasted vote syndrome. With you in studio tonight, it's Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. We go back to your phone calls and thoughts first, however, where Clint is on the line in Idaho. Clint, you're on Free Talk Live. All right. Thanks for the show. Sure thing, uh, Clint. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Well, you, last night you guys uh, played a clip of a uh, phone call between the police officer who uh, shot that uh, fleeing guy in the back and his, I guess it was his chief or superior. This actually wasn't yeah, a phone was, call. It was uh, them talking. I guess it, he was in his cruiser. This was after the incident. Uh, as I understood as I understood what happened, this is the guy who shot the guy in the back multiple times. As he was The 50-year-old man was shot in the back multiple times as he ran away from the South Carolina police officer in question here. It was after the incident in the cruiser with a superior officer who was kind of calming, trying to calm him down and like, hey, you know, you don't have to answer any questions right now. We'll give you a couple days to chill out. You can collect your thoughts. Yeah. And then, uh, and then at some point, he said, you know, the adrenaline will stop pumping. And then he goes, it's pumping, and started laughing. And the other guy was sort of acknowledging him like, oh, I know, I know. I forget exactly what he said, but it was something to that effect. Or, or oh, yeah. Rush. Okay. Yeah, it was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had assumed that was a phone call, but, you know, whatever, anyway, the recording. And, yeah, I was struck by, you know, how differently, you know, that officer will be treated in an investigation than you and I would be if we got – 
arrested for murder there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're not going to get two so, days before an interrogation. Put our, put our story together for a couple of days, uh, you know, and then, then get, uh, you know, some softball questions from some inside investigator. Yeah, no uh, doubt. You know. yeah. So, anyway, Anything else yeah, you want to share, Clint? Nope, that's it. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate hearing from you. Yeah. Edwards in Kentucky. You're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, gentlemen. Edward, go ahead. I'm uh, calling about an upcoming documentary about uh, the origins of the Onion Router, the tour, and I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast because I, I was up to date with you guys. And uh, the director, Alex Winter, who you, you guys will know him as Bill from Bill and Ted. Yeah. He's got a, he has a documentary coming out called Deep Web. and I heard it was already goes, out. Okay. Maybe well, I'm wrong about that. I, I maybe that was like premiering at SXXW or something like that because, or I, I heard something about it in Austin. Uh, some of the guys down there were going to be interviewing him on the the crypto show, and okay. they made it sound like the movie was already released. But maybe, uh, maybe it was just a preview okay. that they saw or something like that. But yeah, I what's the movie called? Doing, it's called Deep Web. I can share. I can share on your guys or message it to you or something. Yeah, I saw it the trailer. Looked, it looked really good. It's all about the Silk Road, right? I think yeah, I think it's uh it's about the origins of of the deep web starting and how these guys and he also did uh downloaded which which um I guess was the origins of Napster. But it really sounds like this Alex Winter guy just gets it. He Yeah. Um he he is uh he's well versed in everything. He has kids, he totally he totally gets bit torrenting and sharing and it really looks like um it's in gentle hands with this Alex Winter gentleman. Yeah, I have to say it looked really good and uh, really cool to see Bill from Bill and Ted's getting back out there. And I did hear there's another Bill and Ted movie in the works as well. Well, well good. Uh, the the implications that it sounds like are going to be coming out. Obviously, the um, the allegations that that these uh, federal agents were where they they were the ones that actually brought hard drugs to the Silk Road. So really? Ross Ulbricht, it, it sounds like he he was a gentleman who's who just he made it he made it with some other designers. He was I guess a physicist major at Penn State and a, a a pretty intelligent guy. And he he started it, and then it sounds like all evidence pointing to then he just gave, gave it up and, and turned it over. And you you all have talked to his mom and and heard her speak. That's right. Every every, every one of his family members can swear that. He, he wasn't running this double life. He wasn't doing this thing. He was just the guy that kind of believed in the free marketplace. And just well, they wouldn't it. know. I mean, his family wouldn't know if he was uh, living a double life. My family didn't know I was selling weed. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but sure. nonetheless, yeah. Uh, yeah, it does look good. And apparently, okay, so I'm on the website for it right now, deepwebthemovie.com. It is going to okay. premiere at the end of May on Epics, which I guess is, uh, what is that, a TV channel? I don't know. I think so, yes, I don't sir. Watch TV. Hey, thanks, Edward, for the heads up on that. I definitely appreciate it. In I fact, hope it comes it was, out on uh, Netflix or Amazon so that we can uh, see it, uh, you know. Well, somebody's going to rip it to torrent. I mean, you can absolutely I download know it that way about if you want to. Well, it's not hard to teach you, Mark, if you would like to learn a, yeah, a thing yeah, or two. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the toll-free number is 855-453-RICH. Rich, let us talk a little more about the wasted vote syndrome. Our caller at the end of the second hour brought it up, and this is one of the most common objections that a libertarian will receive. When you're out there talking about libertarian party stuff, like trying to get somebody to vote for whatever libertarian candidate might run for president uh, in 2016, the major objection that most of the time you will hear is that, well, I can't vote for libertarian because then the other party that I don't like less, uh, that are the party that I like least will be more likely to win because voting libertarians will take the votes away from the party that I like the, uh, the most of the two big bad right. parties. And so therefore I won't vote for the libertarian. Usually they'll say Republicans, but that's just because they misunderstand and think that uh, the Democrats are not people who become libertarians but actually republicans and democrats both become libertarian yeah well that's one thing and i would really like to see a website set up one day where uh where democrats and republicans can go and they can be matched in pairs ah. you match one democrat with one republican and you both make a gentleman's agreement that you will not vote for the major party <laughs> that you normally vote for and that way 
the loss to your parties, respectively, offsets. Meaning that the and person it, could vote if they wanted to for both could vote for a libertarian or they could just vote for some other third party, right? Yeah, so one could vote green, for a libertarian. Vote socialist, vote, yeah. vote communist if that's what you believe, although I don't know why you're listening to the show. Um, yeah, sometimes but, you listen well, to what you don't like. Then right? again, we, you know, hopefully there are communists out there learning. Um, exactly. But, uh, but yeah, to me, I'm. I'm I think not that's a, a conspiracy idea. theorist guy, but what I do know be, or what I do believe, and it seems like a very easy thing to do, is they discovered that it was very difficult to uh, to steal an election, a general election, but it was very easy to take over the party mechanisms. And I think both parties are being run uh, by the same people. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, th- I don't think that Romney would have been a whit different from Obama. I Absolutely think he would have not. done exactly the same things because I think he would have had the same person pulling the strings. Uh, and so I think there's a strong argument for that. Yeah. So, so to me, I don't care if it's a, if it's a, uh, a Democrat or a Republican, it doesn't make any difference to me. So but but for those who do still see the difference, I think a matching site would be a, would be a good thing to do, and just say go out and vote for any third party, or even don't vote. And that would eliminate the wasted vote syndrome. Yeah. That exactly. Matching website. Smart yeah. sure. stuff. But one side or the other is going to attempt to get people matched. Um, you know that aren't uh, like the best thing to do would be to be the Democrats and then get a whole bunch of Republicans to match imaginary Democrats who aren't actually going to vote that way, and then you get a bunch of people who would have voted for Republicans. Republicans then voting for uh, libertarians mm-hmm. or vice versa. It doesn't really matter which is the other. So I think you're going to have to come up with some system to sort of validate this. And the problem that's the problem with mm-hmm. uh, secret ballot voting. Well, right? a certain I mean, there is a certain percentage that will say, oh, ho, I can game this system and I'm really a Democrat, but I'm going to say I'm a Republican. But I'm guessing that you'll have about the same percentage of liars on both sides, so that too would offset. Yeah, Could it be. really doesn't matter what the actual results are of it. What matters is you would defeat the wasted vote syndrome. Right. Uh, and the, the, yeah, and and the wasted vote syndrome. I mean, your vote isn't going to be the one vote no. <laughs> that makes the difference anyway. Yeah, there's that too. So right. And that's really the point. Really that's the most important point. Is is your vote isn't going to make a difference in a presidential election? So why waste it? On a Democrat and Republican, when you can waste on a third, when you can you know vote on a third party and actually get counted. We'll come back Damn with right. more. Eight fifty five, four fifty three. It's Free Talk Live. Warning: If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station because there's an alternative to bankruptcy and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Over 
overburdened with material comforts, America's wealthy can expect another disappointing holiday this year. As Brian Scott tells us, the rich will simply be buying too many things to experience the true meaning of Christmas. All across the country, those at the top of the economic ladder are denied a privilege that the poorest of the poor take for granted. Rather than fall victim to the rampant consumerism that seems to increase each year, the poor find meaningful joy in simple Christmas traditions, like singing carols to keep warm and hugging relatives who have not yet died. At stores like these, the spiritually bereft must scramble for popular holiday toys in a vain attempt to duplicate the Christmas time happiness that the impoverished enjoy. Poor people are grateful for just a roof over their heads or something to eat. My wife and I are both lawyers, so that's not enough for us. I certainly hope poor people don't take what they don't have for granted. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. And check out the Pocket Power Plus. If you're somebody who's got a smartphone or even a laptop, the Pocket Power Plus can help run your power-hungry devices, in some cases for days if necessary. So you can go to pocketpowerplus9.com to learn more about this breakthrough in portable power technology. It's pocketpowerplus9.com. It's a source of backup power so small you can put it in your pocket or keep it in your uh, briefcase, your purse, glove box of the car. In fact, it's so powerful in some circumstances it can actually jumpstart a car. So go to pocketpowerplus9.com. It comes with a full accessory pack, by the way, with most of the adapters that you could need, including the jumper cables. Use coupon code FTL and you'll save even more at pocketpower plus9.com that's pocketpowerplus9.com let's go to your phone calls and thoughts then coming up more of the uh the t-shirt manufacturer that has been threatened legally by the hillary clinton campaign but first sharita is on the line in cleveland hello sharita hi hey you're on the air go ahead hi how are you guys doing good today? go please with your thoughts I was just calling because I feel that the situation with Walter Scott, I felt that they shot him down like a dog. And I felt, I feel like it's unfair. I feel like it's a demonic spirit that's coming over the police force. And I feel that something needs to be done because there are too many of our people, whether you're black or you're white, there's too many of us that are being killed, you know, just, you know, viciously by the police. You know, I've had I've had the same thought. I mean, I'm I'm not a big demon person, but <laughs> you know, just just the idea that there has been a pattern uh that started in Ferguson of just a lot of these shootings very closely uh grouped together. And I've heard people who are more conspiracy minded than I uh saying that, that they think that they actually think that the powers that be are trying to start a race war. Um, I don't think that's plausible, though. I mean, I think that uh, mostly we're past racism. I understand it's still out there. There still certainly are racists, but 
Um, I can't imagine people breaking into a war over race. If it Maybe didn't happen wrong. in the 70s, I don't think it's going to happen now. Yeah, it seems to be less likely over time. But um, mm-hmm. I can tell you that there was a recent uh, – we had a study, and uh, I guess it was – I think it was a Gallup poll, and it, you know, it rated both black and white Americans and their feelings towards the police for, since 1981 until recently. And the numbers have just plummeted for uh, black people, and they've really – they've more than cut in half for, for whites. Meaning so, that they don't like them even more now that right. those Police people... are just not trusted the yeah. way that they were. It was uh, 81 percent for whites – in 1980, excuse me, about 81 for whites in 1981. That trusted the cops. Yeah, the trust of the police and uh, had confidence, I believe was the mm-hmm. terminology. And it was like 73% for blacks. And then it's mm-hmm. just gone down into the mid-30s for blacks. And I can't remember what it was for whites, but it was about 50 or so. Wow. I, that's pretty uh, That's pretty impressive. Of course, the cops have done it to themselves by perpetrating things like the war on drugs, which is, of course, a war on our friends and family members, uh, arresting teenagers for underage drinking and all other manner of victimless crimes, prostitution, gambling enforcement. All of these things have eroded the police's uh, legitimacy over time, and they continue to pursue them with as much gusto as they possibly can, and more so. So, you know, they keep just withering away their legitimacy, and now with all the violence, it'll be interesting. Mark, when did you see those numbers? Was that within the last year? Year, uh, it was, we, we did a show on it within the last two weeks. Okay. Maybe I wasn't here for you that weren't. one. So, Sharita, oh, she just dropped off the line. I guess she was done with her comments. Thank you, yeah. Sharita, for the call. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I don't see the police, uh, you know, they don't really seem to be too concerned with their viability, with their legitimacy. They just keep pushing. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't matter to them that, what is it, 70%, 80% of Americans are in favor of medical cannabis or significant numbers of Americans in favor of legalizing that 80% of the New Hampshire State House uh, that was voting the other day voted for marijuana decriminalization. 80%. You know, all these numbers mean nothing to the police. They still continue to come out and testify. You were at the most recent hearing, Rich. In fact, you posted your testimony over at freekeen.com just a couple of days ago, as a matter of fact. I yeah, and that was pretty good. I will say with the police, I mean, I can have a certain amount of respect for a person who lives by his own philosophy even if I don't believe in that philosophy. And so I will say that if you're a true believer in democracy and and in the constitutional system, then you have then you have to say that, well, you know, this is the way the game plays out. And even if 80% of the people think it's a bad idea, you know, you still have to enforce the law as long as it's on the books. And I'm sure that's what, what your average average cop would say. Now, personally, I find democracy to be an unjust system. Uh, but it's more than that, Rich, because they're not just enforcing the law in the books. They're going to the state house hearings, and they are advocating to keep the laws on the books. So they're actively acting on a political basis to mm-hmm. continue the status quo. It's not just like they're just sitting back, these you know mindless automatons, and saying, well, we're just enforcing the law. If you were to change the law, we would stop enforcing it. No, they come out and they say, we want these laws mm-hmm. to stay in place. We don't want you to have medical cannabis. We don't want you to have even decriminalization. Uh, and they come out and they testify again and again. And the mm-hmm. chiefs of police and you know these uh, the state police were there, and they trot out all the same old arguments. And it's just so frustrating because they are they've gone beyond just being the enforcement wing. They're now the enforcement and the advocacy for the continued enforcement. As and well. I and I will say, you know, there's about a dozen cops or maybe two dozen cops that I've seen up at those uh, hearings testifying in favor of keeping unjust laws on the books and i have a very special contempt for those particular uh individuals chased one out (laughs) you remember filming me chasing one out of the uh, state house one time saying do you get a special feeling of pride when you put a sick person in prison for taking their medicine he didn't like that question needless to say he walked away as quickly as uh, as he possibly could so um yeah they're doing it to lose right they're doing it to themselves Uh, They want respect, but yet they don't respect you, and they don't respect your choices, and they will put you in a cage over many of uh, the choices that you might make, Uh, but yet they want you to respect their jobs and what they do. Sorry, respect works both ways. 
Mm-hmm. You got to give it to get it. And they they know they don't have to. They know they've got the guns, they've got the cages, and they can just force you to respect them. And that is that is a level of respect where you're respecting somebody out of fear, like a judge or a cop, mm. for instance. But it doesn't, in the long run, that that kind of respect doesn't really uh, garner good results. Yeah, I mean, to me, uh, respect and fear are very different different things. If I respect someone, I'm going to listen to their opinion. I might not follow it, but I'm going to listen to it. If I fear someone, I'm going to figure out how to fight them. Yeah, good luck with uh, fighting the state. That's, uh, that's, you <laughs> well, do we're it engaged in it. Yeah, we're, we're still standing. We're doing it peacefully, though, and uh, that's the important part. With numbers, with raw numbers, as you talked about before with the Free State Project. Oh, yeah. Check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. We'll come back with uh, another liberty activist here. He's under attack by the Hillary campaign for a parody T-shirt. We'll come back with that here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. 
Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We're back with more. You can dial in toll free here. Bring up what you'd like. Had good participation so far tonight. You can join us also on Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm, although I don't think anyone has called Skype tonight. Our toll-free lines have been busy. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Not busy enough to where you'll get a busy signal, though. So you can join us here, 855-450-FREE. You know, it's a lot easier to get on Free Talk Live than uh, people realize. They think, oh, well, that's a national talk show. I can't get on there. Well, one of the things you're not supposed to do in talk radio is tell people that they can actually get on the phones. Uh, or give any kind of indicator of whether or not, you know, what the status is of uh, of the phones. We we like to break the rules of talk radio here on Free Talk Live. So, yeah, it's really shockingly easy, actually, to get on uh, and join us here. You can bring up anything you want. We're talking about the oligarchy. Uh, to come back around to the topic from before, where LibertyManiacs.com is under fire yet again. Uh, we've had some of these shirts. They're very, very cool designs over at Liberty Maniacs. They were a sponsor of the show for a while in the past, if I'm recalling correctly, Mark. Uh, LibertyManiacs.com. Yes, they uh, yes they did do some sponsorship. They did the Peace, Love, Liberty shirts, didn't they, that the, yep. you and I like to wear? Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, great products. They've got some cool designs. Some of them are you know more serious. Some of them are pretty funny. And these politicians don't like the funny designs. They are coming after this guy again now. He's gotten a cease and desist or a uh, takedown order for parody he's done of the Ready for Hillary campaign. He said when the media began to pump the story of Jeb Bush possibly running for president in 2016, making the possibility of a Clinton versus Bush part two election, enough was enough. He said, so I hatched the silly idea of doing a parody of the ubiquitous I'm ready for Hillary design. To be honest, I really just wanted to put it on my own car as a sticker. So I first made bumper stickers of the design, which basically just swaps out the word Hillary for the word oligarchy. So it's the yeah. same design. I've seen it, yeah. I'm ready for oligarchy. And then I put them on shirts and mugs and things in the store for others if they like them. And I see this as not just an you know, attack on the Hillary campaign. I see this as a, you know showing that the Hillary Bush lineup is right. just a bunch of the same old, same old. That's exactly what this is, because he's a libertarian. He's not a Republican. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly the message they don't want getting out, is the Republicans and the Democrats are the, are the same. same. Last presidential election, he says, I did parody yard signs that poked fun at American politics being run by an oligarchy, and they were a hit. I actually put a huge one in my yard as well. It was hilarious to watch people stop and read it, even taking pictures next to it from time to time. The number one question people asked all the time about these signs, though, was, quote, what the hell is an oligarchy? (laughs) That's one reason I was so pleased to see that the Guylands and Page study made such a splash in the media this spring. Maybe people will actually get these parodies now. He says, well, evidently people got them this time, but not exactly the people I had in mind. Within days of my posting the I'm ready for for oligarchy bits, I was notified by the content review people at Zazzle and Cafe Press. These are the two major players in the make-your-own-stuff market where you come up with a design and you can slap it on all manner of coffee mugs and shirts and stickers and things like that. They uh, notified him that they'd been contacted by attorneys from the Ready for Hillary PAC, and that they weren't willing to produce my parodies, even in my own shops. Disappointed, I once again turned to my lawyer, Paul Allen Levy, who not only represented me recently in the case against the NSA and Department of Homeland Security, because they went after him for another one of his designs making fun of the NSA about a year about, uh, year and a half ago, but he said, uh, actually had in the past, this attorney had successfully represented Cafe Press in a case where the Republican National Committee attempted a very similar tactic to take down parodies of the Republican elephant in 2008. After a very short explanation of the circumstances, we'd sort of been there and done that after all, Paul took the case and gave his advice on what the best course of action should be. What we decided to do was confront their willingness to challenge free speech in their candidate's name. 
Levy sent a letter today demanding a retraction of these takedowns within three days, or we will file an action for a declaratory judgment of non-infringement, seeking damages for lost sales and an award of attorney's fees for the issuance of a frivolous takedown. I hope they get a lot of lost sales. I, like, I, I yeah. wonder how many imaginary sales they might have lost. <laughs> I have no idea well, what the... I was going to buy a t-shirt. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what the I was going to buy be. a thousand. <laughs> He says, oh. <laughs> but it looks like the first chapter of the saga will unfold this week, in three days anyway, after spending the last year of our lives defending the right to make obvious political criticism in federal court against the NSA and DHS. I honestly don't have the patience to wait around and get an answer from these people. Something is seriously wrong with our society if parodies like these can be challenged and people are so afraid that they just lay down when they get a frivolous takedown letter from some hack lawyers pushing down independent criticism from artists and humorists ahead of their foregone conclusion candidates goes pre-announcement book tour. I've worked with these companies for over a decade, even won a federal case to clear the way for exactly this situation against the two of the most powerful agencies in the federal government, and they still folded, meaning that Zazzle yeah. and Cafe Press folded. Well, what are you supposed to do about that? I mean, what does Zazzle or Cafe Press really care about freedom of speech? Apparently they don't. They don't. Why mm -hmm. would they? Well, well, the good thing is, I don't know about Zazzle, but Cafe Press is extremely expensive. Start getting these t-shirts uh, screen printed by the hundreds. I've done Ron Paul t-shirts. I did 420 ra rally t-shirts. They come to about 5 or $6 a piece, with inflation yeah. a piece, and that's about half of what you're paying on Cafe Press. So just print them, set up a well website, and sell them. He says, uh, I would like to thank all of those brave souls who've supported my work and my cases over the years. Uh, the last year, I absolutely could not have had the endurance, courage, and financial support to do the right thing without all of you. And I'd like to thank, he goes on to say, his attorney and the staff at Public Citizen Levy. The attorney is an absolute bulldog, and our country is a far better place because of him choosing to take on these cases and stand up for what's right by stemming the tide of idiotic copyright claims. Last year, he says, I decided to draw a line in the sand and dig in. If people want to let free speech erode away in this country like they've decided to let many other rights and liberties disappear, that's their choice, but I'm not willing to sit by and watch it happen. So... To ready for Hillary, PAC, or whomever wants, uh, whoever else wants to get in line to challenge free speech with cowardly legal tricks, I say, bring it on. The joke will be on you. That's from Dan McCall. He's the operator, the uh, CEO, the creator over there at LibertyManiacs.com. Kudos to him for continuing to uh, not go down without a fight here in standing up for free speech. And, Mark, to answer your question about you know these companies, the Cafe Press, the Zazzles of the world who are just—, just kneeling uh, at the, the trough of the federal government and doing whatever it is that they're told. You take this so personally. Stop. These, these people are in business, for God's sake. Yeah, well, you know what? If there were enough people out there who said, hey, free speech matters, then they would stand up too. And, you know, some companies like Amazon and Google have challenged the federal government in certain ways. So it's not unheard of for companies to stand up for certain rights. It's just that it's easier to, to bend over, I guess. Usually well, the there's an ethical requirement, though, on a board of directors of a corporation. They're, they have one job, and that is to return dividends and increase stock values to their shareholders. Sure. And sometimes the best way to do that is not to take a political stand, but when cafe press does the predictable and and cowardly thing or this other company does the predictable and cowardly thing that's when people underground need to step up and say okay you don't want to print this i'll print it right, i'll send you to enough to print uh, print 100 t-shirts and sell them yeah there needs to be a competitor out there who has the principles i understand mark that business owners are chicken and they're just in it to make money, and I'm fine with that. That's understandable. But if you keep bending over to the state, eventually they're going to come after you for something, and then there's nobody else going to be left around to help you out because you didn't stand up when the time was right. I disagree. So um, the fact is is that the federal government and local governments are very good at shutting down businesses that they target. They're very good at it. They'll take away your licenses. They'll scare away your employees. Hiding do out isn't going to keep you safe forever. Right. These people aren't in to business to be liberty warriors. I'm not making excuses for them. I'm just mm. trying to explain it to you, Ian.
I don't need it explained, Mark. It's still cowardice, and it's not doing anything good for uh, for freedom in uh, in America. 855-450-FREE. There's more coming up here in moments. You can take control on Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking the dead swarm his home now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape look for survivor max on facebook read reviews on amazon or read chapter one at survivormax.com it's the biggest flooring event of the year. Lumber Liquidator's 12th annual April sale with five days of unbelievable clearance deals from 29 cents. Don't miss once-in-a-lifetime prices on solid pre-finished Bellawood domestic hardwood from an incredible 99 cents or Bellawood three-quarter-inch exotic hardwood up to 77% off. Bamboo, laminate, and more up to 67% off. Plus, more deals added daily in your local store and 24-month special financing for beautiful, high-quality hardwood floors for less. Get to the April sale event today. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We've got enough time for you if you dial now, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features waiting for you. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then please support the African fundraiser that we're doing right now. And in fact, 
We've got just over a month left. It started, I think, on the 17th of March. It ends 60 days from there, so we're going to end it in the middle of May. So we literally have just over four weeks left. And we're, I think, over 10% now of the uh, the total. I actually haven't looked in the last couple of days. I have to admit, I am not an expert fundraiser. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I have zero experience at it. And when it's all said and done, I'll probably have still fairly close to zero experience because I've got so much that I'm doing during the day that's not fundraising that I can do little more than kind of promote it every now and then on the show. And I, you know, I... Maybe there's other stuff I could be doing to make it more successful, but I just don't know what those things are. So I'm kind of relying on you, dear listener, to go to africa.lrn.fm and to check out uh, the pitch page, if you if you will, to you know take a look at you know, the idea of why this is a good concept, why sending you know the uh, the signal of liberty to Africa via free-to-air satellite is a valuable idea. And uh, right now, a few dozen people have agreed that it is valuable. In fact, we've got 28 funders with now $2,200 raised. So we are uh, 10% of our goal. Unfortunately, it's taken a month to get to 10%. It uh, pretty much jumped up to about 9% within the first week. And the uh, the other three weeks, it's been pretty slow. We did add some extra perks. Uh, so now you can, get a, you can get Angel Clark or Mark here to read a voicemail, a custom voicemail greeting. Uh, that's one of them. That's a hundred dollar uh, perk. There's also a thousand dollar perk of being able to sit in studio of several different shows. You can pick your favorite show from LRN.FM. Many of them have stepped up and offered their studios very kindly. Now you'd have to pay for your own travel costs, but we brought down the price of that. That was a five thousand dollar perk. It's now available at a thousand bucks. So we tried to make some tweaks here and there. We added some of the smaller uh, value perks or whatever, but. You know, the Liberty uh, liberty movement isn't that big, and I don't know the rich people. So um, I'm counting on a bunch of small donations over at africa.lrn.fm. So please. Yeah, if you want to reach those people, they're clearly not going to, you know, the, the Africans aren't going to be able to afford to uh, get us on the, the satellite there. So it's going to have to be other folks. Yep. So again, africa.lrn.fm. Thank you in advance for doing that. And whether you can afford it or not, I mean, again, you can do, you can do a dollar, you can do five dollars, whatever you want. Uh, but if you know if you can't do anything, then please just share the link and try to get that out there and and or share the YouTube video as well. Again, our toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. They're uh, coming after Liberty Maniacs. He's standing up for himself. Mark, you're saying this is against his best interest. He should just keep quiet. No, he should just no. No, uh, I'm not saying. I don't that. think either of us was saying that. We were saying that it was against the best interests of the large corporations like Zazzle. And well, they're not that large, but Zazzle and uh, Cafe Press to buck the system because they've got a lot of assets that are easily found. And if you're going to buck the system, you want to be fly by night. You don't want you want to be lawsuit proof. You mm-hmm. don't want to have a lot of wealth that they can take from you. And sure, but so that's the same really reason small businesses for the app. Well, for s- small they've got things to lose too. I mean, when the when small business loses their business, it hurts just as much, right? I mean, that's their life savings in a lot of cases. So they're not willing to buck yeah, the system either. True, but agorists are activists. You know, counter economic activity. And I wasn't going to bring this up, but I did see the uh, dispute between you guys about whether agorism was activism. Agorism is activism because in agor counter economic activity is any gray or black market activity. Agorism is counter economic activity carried out for a political purpose. Okay, so the way that translates to t-shirts is it's it's hard to go across to go up against the smaller guy because there isn't very much to take from them. Mm-hmm. So if an agorist business sets up and especially if they have a clever distributed business model uh, to distribute these shirts, then they can go around the big companies that have a lot to lose, and they can still get their message out there. Like, if for some reason this guy decided to give up uh, printing his shirts, that's something that any agorist company could do and put out a small website. They could sell them informally, hand-to-hand. They could take them out and sell them on the street, and it's very difficult to enforce against that. Well, um, so Dan McCall, who runs uh, Liberty Maniacs, runs a business that sells libertarian-oriented swag. Yep. 
and it's awesome stuff. Uh, and you go check it out at libertymaniacs.com. But Zazzle does something, and Cafe Press, they do something entirely differently. So Dan McCall benefits from and is incentivized to stand up to the law in these cases. Um, at the very least, he benefits if you can't claim that he's incentivized, because I, I couldn't really say uh, what, you know, one well, side looks of the other. Well, it looks good for his gains libertarian street cred, which yes. means that, you and, know, and I would encourage anybody listening to this, buy something from li- Liberty ma- uh, Maniacs, you know, he support gets the cred. their cause. But he also gets the free advertising. Right. He didn't yes. buy ads on uh, Free Talk Live recently, so we're we're definitely promoting him on. Right. So, so. And he mm-hmm. gets other – and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I mean, we were by no means the biggest media organization covering his stuff. Yeah. So um, he's incentivized in certain fashions. Zazzle – you know, not so much. I mean, so they get some bad press. That. They get some bad press from Ian, the most radical talk show host in the in the land. Mm-hmm. They may somebody may wear that as a badge of honor. Thank God that lunatic doesn't like us. Um, you know, so <laughs> so big fat hairy deal. Um, you know, yeah. the, the vast majority of people uh, have their same opinion that they had of Zazzle before as they do after. They don't really have the same incentive. I totally Dan understand. McCall, um, basically has to use one of these companies because what he's doing is he's offsetting the risk of printing t-shirts by essentially printing on demand. Yeah. When somebody asks for them, they get it on demand from Zazzle or Cafe Press, whoever right. he's using. So he's stuck. All he can really do is write a, a blog post that says, these people are a bunch of cowards. And okay, they're a bunch of cowards, but the fact is you're going to find the vast majority of people on planet Earth are going to do things that are in their interest. Of course, of but course. But the I'm business just... concern is you don't have a guy to print your shirts, and the business answer to that is find a guy to print your shirts who's willing to take the risk. Right, that's what I'm saying is that if we want to have more freedom, I understand the rationale for be- bending over for the state. I mean, even Dan could make that rationale if he wanted to. He could just decide it's just easier to do what he's told and just go on selling other liberty-oriented products and just keep quiet about what happened. But he's he's, he's right. I mean, you're right that it is in his best interest to make a lot of noise about this. Um, but I want to live in a world where it's in any business's best interest to make noise when the government comes after them, like Carrie Ellison did of the Black Hawk Saloon in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, when he stood up to the government. But was government it good for him? Uh, I don't know. No, I mean, he spent spent money in the, the legal system. I don't know if his bar is still open. I'm not sure right. what the status well, of the it government... is. But it was good for him for a while because he was getting business out of all of the publicity he was getting. And he wasn't a libertarian like we are. He was just a bar owner who was mad because the government came down and said, you can't allow cigarette smoking in here. And he said, the hell with that. I'm going to keep allowing cigarette smoking in here. And so mm-hmm. he got a lot of press world, out of that. I want if, that world too, Well, Ian. we've got to have people take the steps and take the risk. And until somebody he does like Dan here then mm. there's there's just going to a bunch of people cowering and that doesn't get us anywhere it's going to have to be small companies it's going to have to be probably people who set up for the purpose because once you're getting into agorism, you're getting into how do I not get caught? It's like selling drugs it's not a matter of I'm going to do this openly and I'm going to let them sue me. It's a matter of I'm going to be hard to find and I'm going to shuck and jive. Well, that's and hard I'm going to, to play do. I mean, if you're, if you're it talking, is hard to do, well, but we need to learn to do it. But, well, wait a minute. But, Rich, I mean, it's fine if, if you want to sell If we can do the pot. Silk Road, why can't we do a Silk Road for t shirts? You no, know, it's just, it's. You know, you've got to have a storefront. You've got to have a uh, credit card processing. You've got Silk to have... Road doesn't have any of that stuff. No, that's true. But it's also it's hard to get on the Silk Road. Well, if it you want is a mass hard, market and that's product. what makes it agorism. You have to. Yeah, see, that's you know, what the, th- the agorists and, need to come out of the shadows, in my opinion. I mean, they need to come out and flaunt the law and uh, let it be known. See, I flout think what law. we need in a lot of cases is border businesses. Like, if I was selling these ag- these uh, T-shirts as an agorist business, I would. Definitely Doubtless be using a storefront and t-shirt printer to actually produce my Mm t-shirts, but you'll never find out which one because they've got assets and the government can go after them. They're bricks and mortar. Yeah, that's okay. a good point to protect um, your suppliers. So, so yeah, you're talking about you know there are ways to to hide things by using different organizations, uh, corporations, LLCs, exactly, that kind of thing. No, and that's that, the kind of stuff that agorists have to be able to do. Yeah, that makes more sense. I mean, if you want to sell T-shirts to the average person, you've got to have a return policy. You've got to be to some mm. extent the, that level of it has to, the customer service side yeah. has to be accessible. And of course, the return policy is hard in the agorist world. 
Well, there's no doubt. Uh, so we're out of time for tonight. You can uh, check out Rich Paul over at the Church of the Invisible Hand on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports Israeli officials are once again outraged and inconsolable after Russia reversed a long-standing ban on selling defensive missile systems to Iran. They're also pretty sure it's Obama's fault. Intelligence Minister Yuval Steinitz claimed that the reversal was a direct result of the U.S. agreeing to the P5 plus 1 nuclear framework with Iran, saying Iranian access to the defensive weaponry would increase aggression. Israel has long opposed the sale of the S-300, an anti-aircraft defense system, to Iran, arguing it would considerably inconvenience them in their oft-threatened plans to attack Iran. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov confirmed the reversal was a function of the framework agreement, noting the sale of the defensive missiles should no longer be a problem. U.S. officials, even if they are slightly more willing